already underway as Carolina leads Mississippi 4-1. to one, And no one has started else besides that game. Delaware, Binghamton scheduled at 7. Danbury Motor City at 7. A postponement for Watertown and Elmira and Port Huron and Columbus. A little bit late to the party tonight. That game will take place at 7.30. The officials start to make their way out onto the ice. We're getting ready for hockey here as we get set for Saturday night action here in Binghamton. Don't go anywhere, folks. The first period is coming up right after these messages. You're listening to Black Bears Hockey on Fox Sports 1430 in Binghamton. Binghamton Black Bears Hockey is on the air. The Black Bears on Fox Sports 1430 is brought to you in part by American Standard Heating and Air, Atlas James Construction, the Black Bears Booster Club, Budweiser, Broom OPWDD, Columbia Mutual Life Insurance Company, Court Jester Athletic Club, CryoWorks, Excite Motorsports, Fairways Indoor Golf, Jeff Keys Auto Sales, Jimmy John's, Homer Men and Boys Store, Ideal Bowling Center, Laquita Inn and Suites, Learning Ladder, Loss at JC, Northeastern Striping Corporation, New York 529 College Savings Plan, Southern Tier Brew, Thompson & Johnson, Toyota, Triple Cities Family Dental, and by Tullings. Now, back to the arena, in the voice of the Binghamton Black Bears. Brooks Hill on Fox Sports 1430 WENE Endicott. Welcome back inside the Jeff Kai's Auto Sales Broadcast Booth. Vision Veterans Memorial Arena home to more FPHL hockey tonight as the Black Bears make their way out onto the ice. It's Boy Scout night as the crowd continues to fill in from the pregame festivities. A couple fans making their way down from the arena club. Here, Brooks Hill alongside my partner tonight, Joya. Demola and Joya, it's a very special night for the Black Bears because they had the opportunity to grab another three points and complete another weekend sweep of an opponent. And Joya, what do you think is going to be the key for the Black Bears tonight to grab another three points over the same Delaware Thunder that they faced off with last night? I mean, Delaware had to travel here today, so hopefully they're off to a slow start. And if we just keep the momentum we ended with yesterday, I think uh, we're in for a good game. And the pregame festivities are getting ready to take place with Boy Scout Night. Presenting the colors tonight, it'll be Troop 43B along with Pack 43 standing behind them. We will step aside for tonight's presentation of the colors and the national anthem. That was the voice of Kathy 
Gruz Gruber singing the national anthem tonight. She did a lovely job in escorting her back off the ice along with the presentation of the colors was Troop 43B and Pack 43 with the color guard tonight. We want to thank them for doing an amazing job here on Scout Night number one. We have Scout Night coming up a little bit later in December as well as we take a look at the Thompson and Johnson Equipment Company goaltending matchup for the visitors. It'll be number 31 in between the pipes. It is Mike McHale, the same goaltender as last night, only allowed three goals on 24 shots, so 21 of 24. And the backup goaltender last night for the Binghamton Black Bears, it was Riley McVeigh. And Julia, what have you noticed about Riley's play so far as he was a late addition to the Black Bears roster? Riley definitely came here and he showed us that he earned a spot to play and that he wants to be starting between the pipes. It's not always about the size of the goaltender. Riley noticeably smaller than both Owen and Joe. And we'll see how that translates here tonight. Opening faceoff is getting ready to be underway here. Referee drops the puck and it's controlled by Delaware and we are officially away here on a Saturday night. Eric Oganezov, the former Black Bear, hit the crossbar last night in a 2-1 game that could have tied the game up in the final seconds of the second period, getting the start on defense with his new teammates. Binghamton dressed in the black attire for the first time this season and the black jerseys are looking mighty clean as Houston Wilson comes in on the back end looking for a friend to pass to. Oganezov from a low angle throws a wrist shot that's easily turned aside by McVeigh. And now Houston Wilson now will backhand it into the corner. Here, drop it back. And now Delaware trying to start a cycle down low. Wilson couldn't have the puck connect on his toe blade. And Black Bears try to exit the zone. And Alex Susi, fresh off of his one game suspension, draws back into the lineup tonight for Delaware. And the Black Bears are caught in a partial line change that allows Delaware to throw a wrist shot right from the faceoff dot, and McVeigh will melt it down. Ideal Bowling Center is where Binghamton hockey fans bowl with open bowling all week along with money-saving specials. Ideal is a great place for family, friends, company parties, and special occasions. Ideal Bowling Center, 119 Jennings Street in Endicott. There's so much more than just your favorite bowling alley. Looks like a member of the Thunder took a puck up high and has immediately gone down to the ice. The referees blow the play dead. That is Pierre-Luc Ballard, played last night, wears 23 in white. And sometimes, Julia, off of those face-offs, you just get the puck bouncing off as it hasn't completely settled down yet on its edges, and it's in a danger spot for it to pop right up on the ice, right? Yeah, we've seen it happen to our players a few times this year, but he looks like he's getting up and heading to the bench. It's always good when a player gets up immediately. You know hockey guys are just infinitely tougher than almost any sport athlete. They'll always tell you it's all about making it to the next shift as the trainer makes their way back to the bench. And in fact, Ballard's not even going to miss a shift. He's going to stay right on the ice. But unfortunately, the rules do say since they stop play for him, he does have to come off. And they're going to send on Chris Corgan to take his spot. And Corgan now making his way out onto the ice. We're exactly one minute gone in tonight's broadcast on a Saturday night. Crowd still filling in here. Tonight inside Vision Veterans Memorial Arena, our friends Bobby and Kelsey upstairs in the ticket office doing a great job getting people in the door tonight. Trevor down in the corner making sure that everything runs smoothly in between the whistles. And in fact, one of the linesmen tonight just grabbing a snow shovel from the Worldwide Sports Supply ice crew calls his own number and decides to do the work himself. Not something you see every day, a linesman with a snow shovel. Back to the action now. Austin Thompson playing his second game back from injury. And it's been a big asset that the Black Bears have been missing. They've been able to skate by a little bit, but they definitely missed his offensive production. As the Black Bears having a little trouble of clearing their own zone. Thompson, the aforementioned, will just back it to Matu Boylard. Black Bears dressed in black numbers with green accents, all white numbers. And boy, oh boy, they're really easy to read from all the way up here in the Jeff Guys Auto Sales broadcast booth as a centering pass goes through the skates of Jake Schultz, who was choking down from his blue line position. Delaware will exit the zone as they throw it around to Matu Boylar. And now Thompson will join the rush. Three on three for the Black Bears. Saucer pass to Parker. Parker trying to backhand it over to Ivoshkin. Ivoshkin had two goals last night, now leads the team with nine on his multi-point night. Delaware throws it all the way down the ice, and this will be icing against the Thunder. Don't forget to get your 50 
and comes all the way back into the Delaware zone and it will be Mac Lewis, Jesse Anderson, and Jamie Bussell. Now the forward group for Binghamton out on the ice. MJ Merkel and Colin Fitzgerald haven't seen too much of that defense appearing quite yet this year as MJ Merkel sends himself and his man into the Black Bears bench. Dennis Gaffroff and MJ Merkel get introduced to a couple guys wearing black behind the boards as a heavy hit laid on by Merkel early in the contest. Black Bears get into the forecheck. Anderson with a turnaround shot, but it's blocked on the way through. It'll be 99 dressed in white. That is Ricky Regala, the former Black Bear. He turns the puck over at the blue line. Anderson throws a slow pass through the slot, looking for Bussell on the temp. Yardwood, first game back from his five-game suspension, does his best figure skating acrobatic play and keeps the play alive. Now Anderson throws a wrist shot wide of McHale's net. Wrap around from Bussell. It's right on the goal post. The puck is loose. Referee saying that they need to play on, and that's exactly what the Black Bears will do. Bussell gets it all the way back to the point for Walters. One-timer from Yardwood didn't get all of that as it's going to be directed into the corner now. Anderson behind the goal line as Bussell goes off on the line change. Black Bears doing a good job with offensive zone time here less than three minutes into the contest. Bussell will turn it over to Regala, who's able just to flick it out to center ice. Walters slaps it in, and that'll allow the Black Bears to get some fresh bodies out on the ice. Houston Wilson tries to indirect it. Tyler Jurich has no idea where it is. Luckily, Kirkby finds it. Centering pass off of the skate of Regala out in front of the net. And now Susie tries to indirect it. Black Bears doing a good job keeping the four-check pressure on with the top line, much like they did last night. Kirkby trying to get to his forehand, swallowed up by McHale, and melted on for no further play. And Julia, it seems that the Black Bears are being real heavy on the four-check tonight, just like they were last night on the road. Yeah, um, Delaware didn't get a change for a good almost two minutes there, so lucky that their goalie covered it up there. Mike McHale calling his own number and melting down the action, hoping just to allow his team to change. As Julia said, around a minute 30 that the Black Bears were keeping the four check on and forcing Delaware to not change, and now it'll be the Black Bears' turn to not change as Schultz will ice the puck all the way down. We're bringing it 200 feet in the opposite direction, and then Delaware will get the second offensive zone faceoff of the night. And one thing that Delaware did such a good job last night of, even though it might not show up in the stat sheet, was controlling faceoffs with their percentage of faceoff wins. Chris Corgan matched up uh, against Gino D'Angelo, and the referee says that D'Angelo had a head start. Excuse me, the linesman. Tonight's lineup of the third team on the ice brought to you by our friends over at the Atlas James Construction Company. Bill Bird and Gordon Laves, the two referees, and Isaac Kessler and Justin Kowalski, the two linesmen. And the linesman said that D'Angelo had been a little early. He was ushered out. The Black Bears do take control over in neutral ice as Kirby tries to one-up it to D'Angelo at the blue line. Unfortunately for Kirkby, just out of his reach, the Black Bears holding the blue line as Boilar pokes down from his spot. But look out, here come the Thunder, two on one. Corgan with it on his stick, shoots for a rebound, but McVeigh does the right thing and steers it into the corner behind the net where the Thunder will be allowed to recollect it, but no immediate second chance on the rebound. Back at the point, Oganezov throws a wrist shot, and McVeigh will steer that one right back into the corner again. Back to Oganezov from Corgan, blocked by Jurich on the way through, and D'Angelo will just backhand it out to neutralize Try to get it deep enough for his teammates to change. D'Angelo skates over to the bench. Schultz and Boilar will stay on as the defense appearing will stay put. Oganezov crosses the line on sides, throws an easy wrist shot that's kicked out by McVeigh. Delaware doing a good job getting shots on goal right now as a wrist shot becomes available in the slot. It looked like Boilar might have blocked that one with his shin. Ivoshkin crosses the line on side. And the forecheck coming right back to work for the Black Bears down low. Ivoshkin gets introduced to Ballard down low. But Delaware now has it at the goal line. They try to exit the zone. It's on the stick of John Amatidis. And Amatidis turns it over. Austin Thompson trying to get his first goal back in the lineup. Ivoshkin with it on his backhand. Gets out in front. Backhander. And it's poked wide at the last possible second. McHale might have got a piece of it. Fitzgerald does a good job of holding the line, and Ivoshkin had Thompson wide open in the slot, but a good defensive play by the Delaware Blue Liners forces Binghamton to retreat into their own end. MJ Merkel now redirects it back to Colin Fitzgerald, and Fitzgerald's another one of those Black Bears who joined the team late. Thompson gets shoved down to the ice, and the Black Bears are headed to the power play for the first time tonight. A cross-checking call 
will be issued after this quick timeout. Don't go anywhere, folks. We're still looking for the game's first goal. You're listening to Black Bears Hockey on Fox 1430 in Binghamton. Now back to more Black Bears hockey on Fox Sports 1430, Binghamton. Welcome back to the action. Black Bears win the faceoff, and Kirby will wrap it all the way around the boards, holding the blue line is alternate captain Tyler Jurich. Black Bears are on the power play. And Kirkby trying to center it up for Yarwood, who is poking in on the back door. Yarwood, Bussell, Jurich, Kirkby, and Lewis. The five out on the ice for the Black Bears. Black Bears were not able to score on the power play last night as the pass from Bussell escapes the grasp of Tyson Kirkby. That will allow some tire bodies to get off of the ice for Delaware as Kirkby has to go all the way back in his own end to collect a loose change. Jarwood tries to backhand it, and look out. There's a partial breakaway now shorthanded. Amatitis in all alone, and McVay outweights him. It rolls on Amatitis' stick at the last second, and the Black Bears are going the other way. Tyler Jurich now in alone. Jurich shoots, and a save made by McHale. Might have been interfered with. Second chance on the rebound. Bussell sends it wide, but the Black Bears have control. And now Thompson throws a wrist shot. McHale swallows up, but it pokes loose by Tyson. Kirkby gets pinned up against the boards through the blue paint and out. Puck is jumping all over the place here with 13.25 left to go halfway through the pe uh, penalty. A wrist shot's thrown on in front. McHale had no idea he still had it. He squeezes his legs for dear life. And boy, Julia, a lot of chances in that first minute of the penalty. Yeah, you saw that slap shot just there by Jurich that I was talking about before the game. And McHale was just lucky to squeeze his pads together. And McHale looked behind him as if the puck had squirted through, but instead just held on deep enough as you get a look at the Heinz Energy replay back at home for our friends listening in tonight on the YouTube live stream. Josh and his team are doing a great job in the video room as always as the second power play unit makes its way out there. Brett Parker, who had the game's first goal last night, has earned his spot here on unit number two. Puck still available, out in front, and Nikita Ivoshkin cashes in once more. He continues to stay hot, the first Black Bear to 10 goals this year, and Binghamton is on the board first. Ivoshkin was in the right place in the right time. And sometimes the puck just comes right to you. And Nikita was able to bury one home to make it 1-0 in favor of the home squad. Black Bears power play tonight, 1-for-1. One one, and you got to know that that makes them feel a little bit better after going 0-for-3 last night, especially not converting on a 5-on-3. Black Bears continue the four-check pressure, but the puck will escape the blue line. Binghamton will have to tag up on the delayed offsides. The captain, Jake Schultz, not in the lineup last night, draws back in tonight. Always good to see Schultz back wearing the black and green tonight. Black Bears outfitted in the black jerseys for the first time this season. And another turnover. Schultz keeps it on sides, looking for a man to pass to. Schultz instead comes all the way around, gets it into the high slot. It's deflected out of play off of a Delaware stick out in front. And with 12.25 left to go, Black Bears still have a 1-0 advantage and everybody will change getting 10 fresh new bodies out on the ice. Brooks, I was just told that Nikita has scored in seven straight games now, which is a franchise record. And thank you, Julia, for keeping me honest. Look at that. First game on the broadcast and already pulling stats out of her hat. That's Julia on the ones and twos tonight as Aloyan throws a wrist shot, trying to go to the high corner, and look out, McVeigh collides with his own 
defenseman Colin Fitzgerald slides into the goaltender. D'Angelo with a wrist shot, does his best rumble pony impersonation, bats it out of midair. McHale will send it into the corner, and Delaware will now cross the blue line, as Julia just mentioned. Nikita with that goal-scoring streak. Seven, seven, stra seven straight games, and boy, that's impressive. A centering pass goes through the blue paint, and now that could have tied the game up. Chris Corgan has it hop over his stick at the last second. It's still down low as Aloyan now collects a roost change on a turnaround shot. Batted back down low for Brandon O'Reilly. O'Reilly centering pass, paddle down for McVeigh, holding that near post. Black Bears have no idea where the puck was in the goaltender, that's what I meant. And the top line for the Black Bears are able to come out, and we have a penalty coming up against Binghamton. Eleven twenty-six left to go here in period number one, and it'll be Binghamton taking the second penalty of the game. It looks like Merkel's going to the box, and he's not happy about it. So well, Merkel not happy anytime anybody goes to the box on his team, but it gives us a time to talk about the Northeastern Striping Corporation. They are specialty contractors for all your paving and concrete needs. The Black Bears penalty kill this year, operating just under. 82%. They would love to get that number up to 90 to the elite level of penalty kill. MJ Merkel gets his penalty announced for slashing here as we continue on here. Houston Wilson through the faceoff dot back up to the blue line. Hero drop it back for his teammate. And Susie has it on his back end. Searing pass out in front and JT Walters a good job of clearing the crease. Knocking down a defender but instead it stays inside the Binghamton zone. Binghamton having some tired bodies out there now. 30 seconds into the penalty kill. Centering pass out in front. McVeigh got his leg to it. Walters took another penalty. And it'll be five on three for the Delaware Thunder. And Susie and Walters having a couple of words for each other. And a little bit of a shove from Walters after that. We'll see if Walters was able to draw a penalty from Susie. It appears not. And it looks like it'll be a minute 19. A five on three time. JT Walters makes his way over to the box. And a minute 19, a five on three time. And it looks like the referee's not done. Referee's still standing at center ice, pointing to everybody. And with some hands up and some confusion, this is a cross checking penalty with 10.45 left to go here in period number one. And the referee trying to sort this thing out. Tyson Kirby now explaining something over to the official. And it looks like it'll be four on three. As Susie heads to the box after all. That's a good eye, Joy. I hadn't made out the number yet, but Alex Susie with some words with the officials. Not going to go over too well. Once the official has his mind made up, nine times out of ten, you're not going to change it. And that's across any sport, not just hockey. And now you see Susie and Walters going at it uh, through the glass in the penalty box. Maybe they're just telling each other what they had for dinner tonight before the game. I'm sure we'll find out when they're let out. Yeah, this one might not be done yet as Susie will stand over the penalty box. He's getting his money's worse. And the good news is these guys can talk about it for two minutes as they will be sitting down. It's two on two, or excuse me, it's four on four. Check that as the wrist shot is put on to McVeigh. It's still five on four, Brooks, from Merkel's penalty. Oh, thank you, Julia. I thought they had ushered that one over. We're halfway through that penalty. Wrist shot looking for a tip out in front by Chris Corgan. It steers the net, and the Black Bears will push it out of the zone. Kirkby will come off for a change, and Jesse... Anderson with the full shield, full visor as you will have. Back out. Good to have Anderson still in the lineup after taking a puck up high off the nose last week. Having to wear the full shield just as a precaution here this weekend against Delaware. Schultz with it down low on the penalty kill. Anderson will backhand it out of the zone and Anderson gets taken down to the ice. Anderson looking for a call, none provided. And we're halfway through the first period. 25 seconds left to go in the penalty to MJ Merkel who's already up and waiting at the penalty box score. 
Wilson leaves the puck back at the blue line, but her just have to wrap it around. McVay gets it on the high glass, knocked out of midair by Corgan, but right onto the stick of Bussell, who ices it all the way down. Merkel comes out of the penalty box in just five seconds, and the back Black Bears penalty kill is officially one for one on the night. Merkel comes on and skates right off as they already had three defensemen. Brett Parker will take his spot, and then Delaware has it behind their own net. Corgan now crosses the blue line, center ice, and will give it for Aloyan. Aloyan will just indirect it off of the glass, and the board's down low. Parker has a man on his back, former teammate Regala, choking in from his blue line spot. A wrist shot put on. That bounced right to the stick of Aloyan, who wasn't expecting the rebound to come out. Three on two for the Black Bears. Draft back for Ivoshkin. Ivoshkin throws a wrist shot and right into the catcher's mitt of the goaltender, McHale, who will melt it down with no further play. 8.53 left to go here in the first period. Shots on goal are nine apiece, but the Black Bears lead by one where it matters the most on the scoreboard. Don't go anywhere, folks. You're listening to Black Bears Hockey on Fox 1430 in Binghamton. Thirty Bingham Chat. Welcome back inside Vision Veterans Memorial Arena, Brooks Hill, along with Julia Demola here tonight. The Black Bears find themselves up one to nothing over the Delaware Thunder. And while we were at commercial, they added a shot on goal for both sides. We're still even at ten halfway through the period. And Julia, a little bit of a faster pace tonight than what we saw last night. Yeah, for sure, Brooks. Um, I don't think that'll affect the Black Bears game at all, though. The Black Bears only had 10 shots on goal in the first period last night, and halfway through the period, they already have 10 tonight and also hold a 1-0 advantage. A quick faceoff for the Black Bears, and Ivoshkin in the one-timing spot off of the faceoff. It's lost by Thompson, the rookie, and Wilson now will skate with it across the blue line. Here, dump it in for his teammate, Amatitis. Amatitis now gets a rough ride by Jake Schultz as he's gets sent down to the ice. Black Bears trying to find the puck, and McVeigh will have to block her that one out at the top of the crease. And now Wilson with it down low, right in the slot. Susie with a wrist shot looking for the upper 90. And Wilson now will collect the rebound. Black Bears get set back up defensively. Oh, Delaware gets set offensively. Indirect pass that's intercepted by Jake Schultz, and a great backhand self pass off the boards for the captain. And a Three-line pass over to Ivoshkin. Ivoshkin tries to center it up for Thompson a little bit too far behind Austin. And out come Delaware. Skating the other way in the wrist shot and is blocker down by McVeigh. McVeigh standing tall at the top of his crease, making that one almost like an infield fly, popping it up right back into the faceoff dot. Going the other way, Ivoshkin in alone, power move, just escapes the far post. He did the same thing last night in the third period to grab the Black Bears' third goal, but could not con connect on this one. Now, Ivoshkin didn't know that his team had the puck and kind of was just jogging his way back to the blue line and instead he skates off. Tyler Jurich now taking his spot with D'Angelo and Kirkby the forwards. Out in front, Kirkby alone trying to stick handle in a phone booth. It rolls off of his tape at the last second and out come the Thunder. Aloyan would just give it a slight glide down the ice as D'Angelo has some words for him but this is offside. And this will come out. Two men coming out of the penalty box. And with 7.14 left to go, the Black Bears will have a neutral zone faceoff coming up. We got a very special interview coming up for you during the Excite Motorsports intermission report. We talked to Black Bears defenseman Kyle Powell about his injury, giving you a little insight on what he's been doing to maybe rehab and get back out on the ice as soon as possible. And then what he's been doing recently for the Black Bears, he's been acting as a bench coach. Was on the bench last night with head coach Gary Gill. We talked about the win last night in Delaware. So stick around for the Excite Motorsports intermission report after the first 20 minutes. Kirkby with it, centering pass, unattainable, but D'Angelo holding the blue line, trying to give it up for Yardwood. It gets handcuffed 
Fine Yarwood not being able to make a play on it, and Wilson trying to skate around Fitzgerald, and Fitzgerald gives no quarter inside the Black Bears blue line. It's on sides, three on two, going the other way. Jerks, that slap shot that Julia's been talking about, hard to connect, and it goes off of the blocker of McHale. Fitzgerald gets taken down, looking for a call. Are the fans dressed in black and green? But the referees dressed in black and white will not provide one there. Jerks with it down low as the Black Bears try to start a cycle. Centering pass for Fitzgerald gets deflected by a Thunder defenseman. Kirkby stopping and starting behind the net just outside of the trapezoid. Wilson trying to take it away from Kirkby. Kirkby with the better. And Jurich tries to throw it right off the back of the goaltender. We've seen the Black Bears do that a couple times this year. As Binghamton needs to tag up on the delayed offsides. Boylar against his former teammate Regala will draw a penalty out in front. The Black Bears score on the delayed penalty. Back Lewis grabs the goal off of the rebound from Matu Boylar. And the Black Bears lead 2 to nothing. It was a delayed penalty coming up against former Black Bear 99 in white, Ricky Regala. And Mac Lewis cashes in. Take a look at the Heinz Energy replay. You see Boylar with it on his backhand, shoveling it to McHale. The rebound becomes available. And Mac Lewis in the right place, right time for the second goal of the night. Puts it past the goaltender, and it's 2 0 Binghamton here in the first period. A little bit like last night as the Black Bears find themselves up by a pair. Boylar will get it back to his defensive partner, Jake Schultz. And now Boussel loads the one-timer up for Schultz. He didn't get all of that one as he just got the top of the puck. Maybe coming off the heel of the stick right there. Not being able to advance it any further than just a couple of feet. Delaware now in control of it with it. In neutral ice, played down legally with a hand. The teams will jockey for it. And Corgan trying to outskate Boylar. Corgan in alone. And McVeigh does a good job of taking away the angle to make sure no shot comes off. Morgan has his shot blocked, and out come the Black Bears the other way. Boussel takes a look, sees some of his teammates changing, but Schultz will jump the rush, take the opportunity, centering pass out in front. Nobody can connect on it for Binghamton, and Delaware skates out to neutralize Corgan, dumps it all the way behind the net of McVeigh, who will set it up on a tee for Walters, who had to serve that cross-checking penalty a little bit earlier in the penalty, officially under five minutes left to go here in period number one. Binghamton up by two as it rolls in on McHale. It takes a funny bounce off of the half boards and maybe a kick plate. Good stick handling by Ivoshkin. Thompson with it in down low. Maybe one handle too many. Second pass blocked on the way by Wilson as a defenseman. Turnaround shot by Ivoshkin. Sent it high off of the glass. Countrymen getting at it with each other as Oganezov and Ivoshkin jockey for the loose puck. Binghamton keeps it in at the blue line as Walters and Yarwood will trade spots. Thompson throws a centering pass. A diving Parker can't put a play on it. cross ice pass for Thompson. The slap shot is knocked down. Delaware can't get it out of the zone. And finally, McHale will melt it down, let his team catch, his catch their breath, and I will do the same. Don't go anywhere, folks. 4.16 left to go. Binghamton now up by two as they lead 2-0 here on a Saturday night. You're listening to Black Bears Hockey on Fox 1430. Are you planning on traveling to Binghamton for an upcoming Black Bears game? If so, check out La Quinta Inn and Suites by Wyndham for a night away from home. La Quinta Inn and Suites is a short drive from the arena and is conveniently located off of the Southern Tier Expressway and Highway 17 with easy access to Interstate 81 and the Vestal Parkway. La Quinta Inn and Suites by Wyndham at 581 Harry L. Drive, Johnson City. Reach them at 607-770-9333. Now back to more Black Bears Hockey on Fox Sports 1430, Binghamton. Welcome back to the action as we get a look at the worldwide sports supply. Ice crew making their way off of the ice. Riley McVeigh has stopped all 11 that he's seen so far. Knocked three times on wood. If you choose to believe in the announcer jinx, I do not. Binghamton also out shooting Delaware 17-11 Julia, so far it's really been Binghamton in the driver's seat offensively with a lot of offensive zone time. Yeah, we saw in that last uh, rush there, they just kept throwing the puck in front and Delaware couldn't get a hold of it. Delaware has done a good job though in the faceoff dot tonight as they win the faceoff, skate out to neutral ice with the puck cross the line on sides. As Gafferoff will just throw it back and he's left it for Tyson Kirby who will elevate it over the head of 99 dressed in white. That's former Black Bear Ricky Regala. In fact, he still has 43 on the back of his helmet. Just a little tidbit and a little bit of a stick for the Delaware Thunder that the new guy just wears 99. 
You don't see it a lot in hockey that anybody gets to wear 99, but just wanted to point out that tonight Ricky Regala is wearing it after a week. O Eric Oganezov wore it last week for the Thunder as well. Yarwood, back in his first game from suspension, comes back down low. He'll drop it for Tyson Kirkby, who is holding Yarwood's spot, and Kirkby just throwing a soft pass that's easily to be deflected out to McHale. Unfortunately for the Black Bears, everybody misses it, and McHale will swallow up and both teams will change with 3.33 left to go. Don't forget Wednesday, two for one beer night. Come spend Thanksgiving Eve with the Black Bears and it'll be a wonderful show. The Danbury Hattricks are in town in early start time of 6 p.m. for Wednesday's game. Two for one beers. Get your tickets now at BinghamtonBlackBears.com or call the office at 607-722-7367. Anderson had the puck temporarily on his stick right in the slot, but a good back check made by O'Reilly. McVay will have to come down and melt it as it just skates past the foot of Matu Boilar, and McVay does a good job of melting it down. 3.09 left to go here in period number one. Turnaround shot, steered aside by McVay. Might have got a toe to it or just let it go into the corner. Mac Lewis trying to backhand it over to Anderson. Those two are line mates tonight. O'Reilly throws a wrist shot from the point. And McVay definitely got a piece of that one as it jumped right over to Houston Wilson's stick. But luckily for the Black Bears, they get out of dodge as they clear the zone. Anderson now the high forward applying the pressure on the four check as he'll go back and forth with J.C. Moritz. Moritz now coming off the ice for Delaware as it's pawed down legally by Matu Boilar, but well, the Black Bears can't force it out of the zone just quite yet. Anderson has to shove it out of the blue line himself. Ivashkin with the goal tonight, already gets his second one there. Make it two in the first period for Nikita Ivashkin. What a laser from a wrist shot. Ivashkin got it at the blue line and just stood handled, got it on the toe and released it past the high blocker of McHale. It's 3-0 Binghamton. Take a look at the Heinz Energy replay. Stick handles to himself, uses the defenseman as a screen. Oganezov in front of his own goaltender. McHale couldn't see it, and Ivoshkin blows it past the goalie for his second goal of the night. Two twenty-eight left to go here in the period, and Binghamton's on top, three to nothing. Also for all the fans here in attendance tonight, a post-game skate on Saturday night. Ivoshkin looking for the hat trick in the first period. Power move, and McHale gets it at the last second. That would have lit the building on fire. Regala now skating out of his own end with the puck. And a little bit of a head start for Amatitis as they cross the line off sides. Two goals already in the period for Nikita Ivoshkin and Julio, what did you like about this play as we see it on the replay? Nikita did what Nikita does best, and he skated the puck straight into the zone, a strong wrist shot, and when it's good, it's good. It, it helps that Ivoshkin is just so fast, and he has so much acceleration that he's able to just blow by defenders, and I think that caught the Delaware blue line sleeping a little bit, thinking that they had a little bit more time to gap up and find positioning, but... If Ivashkin gets his hands free, her let it go from anywhere. Gorgon now throws a wrist shot. That's blocked on the way through by D'Angelo. And now Jurich will skate out to neutralize with it. They cross the line on sides, looking for D'Angelo out in front. D'Angelo didn't have any real estate left to go to get it back to his forehand as the backhand attempt is easily saved by the goaltender. Binghamton now with 18 shots on goal. Crowd ooing and aahing as Kirkby gets taken down to the ice. And now Jurich back to D'Angelo, and this time thrown to the wide side of the net so far wide that it will escape the offensive side for Binghamton and Amatitis now skating in it throws it wide of Riley McVeigh's net and shots going wide of the targets just forcing it right back out into neutral ice just about 70 seconds left to go here in period number one Black Bears find themselves up three to nothing and now the Thunder trying to escape the zone but Jamie Bussell gets on the four check comes away with the takeaway one minute left to go Kirkby all alone out in front but the pass got deflected by it appeared Eric Oganezov out in front playing defense tonight for the Delaware Thunder. Now with it down low, Delaware has it for Houston Wilson back to Oganezov. Oganezov has a wrist shot blocked on the way through. And Weber now 16, dressed in white tonight. He was wearing 19 last night. 
for Delaware back in home. Boussel crosses the line on side. Puck available in the slot, in the blue paint. Where is it? It ends up behind the net. McHale gets out of dodge as he makes his way back up to his feet. That could have been a dagger here in the first period. Black Bears up three to nothing in period number one. Turnover though, Binghamton still has 15 seconds to work with. Fitzgerald skate to stick, trying to drop it back for Ivoshkin. 10 seconds left to go in the period. Ivoshkin gets sent down to the ice legally by Wilson. Black Bears have five seconds left to go. Ivoshkin backhand, steered aside by Oganezov. Delaware will throw it behind the net and that'll be the end of the first period. Black Bears on top three to nothing over Delaware here in the Saturday night showdown. And a rematch between the two sides from last night. And Julia, your immediate thoughts after the first 20 minutes. Binghamton definitely came out stronger than we did last night with 21 shots on goal. And you could tell Nikita's hungry for that hat, tri hat trick. So we'll see how the rest of the game goes. Uh, so far, Tyson Kirkby, the only Black Bear to have a hat trick this season. In fact, he has two already, one on the road and one at home. We're take a quick timeout, come back, folks, but don't go anywhere. We have a lot of fun stored up in the Excite Motorsports Intermission Report. We've been listening to Black Bears Hockey on Fox 1430. Are you on Tuesday, November 29th at 6 p.m.? Come join myself, Brooks Hill, along with head coach Gary Gill and the entire Black Bears 2022 and 23 roster as we take a deep dive into the Black Bears season, recaps this past weekend's game, and look ahead to the future. Tully's on the Vestal Parkway, home of the Tully's Good Times with Coach Show. We cannot wait to see you out there. Power outages are a thing of the past when you have a Generac home standby generator installed by the team at American Electric. Give them a call today or visit them on the web at aegenerators.com. If you're looking to install a beautiful, durable, and handcrafted countertop, call Alice James Construction. The Southern Tier's most trusted stone fabrication will design and install your dream countertop and let you choose from a premium selection of natural stones like marble, granite, or quartzite. Stone or granite countertops starting as low as $35 per square foot installed. Schedule your free quote and receive a free sync with your countertop project. Call 607-275-5495. CryoWorks provides cryotherapy that uses nitrogen-cooled air to target specific areas of pain and inflammation. Local cryotherapy targets a specific area to deliver the same effects of the whole-body cryotherapy to that specific site. Treatments take 5 to 8 minutes, with a benefit exceeding that of hours of icing. Your Binghamton Black Bears, premier choice of cryotherapy, CryoWorks. 26 South Washington Street, Binghamton. Call to schedule an appointment today at 607-269-5392. Getting your hands on an all-new CF Moto side-by-side -side or four-wheeler is now easier than ever at ExciteMotorsports.com. Purchase your next power sports vehicle with our new, easy, and quick online buying experience. Browse inventory on ExciteMotorsports.com. Buy. Get approved for financing and e-sign online right from your phone. Ride. Have your new power sport vehicle delivered to your home the next day at no extra charge. Browse. Buy. Ride. Fun starts here at ExciteMotorsports.com. Whether you're a high school or college athlete or a weekend warrior, Guthrie is the area's premier sports medicine program, offering injury evaluation, concussion management, physical therapy, and more. With a full team of providers across New York and Pennsylvania offering same or next day appointments, Guthrie gets you back in the game as quickly as possible. Call the Guthrie Sports Medicine team today at 866-GUTHRIE or learn more at guthrie.org slash sportsmed. Now it's time to take a look back from the previous Tully's Good Times with Coach Show. Make sure to subscribe to the Binghamton Black Bears YouTube page so you can catch every show. Join us Tuesday, November 29th at 6 p.m. 
come join myself, Brooks Hill, along with head coach Gary Gill and the entire Black Bears 2022 and 23 roster as we take a deep dive into the Black Bears season, recaps this past weekend's game, and look ahead to the future. Tully's on the Vestal Parkway, home of the Tully's Good Times with Coach Show. We cannot wait to see you out there. Welcome back inside Tully's Good Times, and now I'm joined by Black Bears forward Tyson Kirkby. And Tyson, thanks for taking some time out of your evening and joining us on the show. Yeah, no problem. Happy to be here. And boy, what a weekend for you. You have a four-point night on Friday night, and you get a hat trick just in the third period alone. So obviously you were doing some right things, or you know, as maybe some of your teammates say, just cleaning up the garbage out in front at the right time. But two hat tricks so far this season for the Black Bears in the last two weekends, since the last time we were here at Tully's actually. Have you been doing anything different that you weren't doing at the beginning of the year, or what seems to be going right for you? Uh, I just think uh, the puck is going in the back of the net right now. I think uh, first couple weekends, you know, I had some scoring chances. Uh, it just it wasn't going in. Uh, I think that last last Friday night there, you know, some lucky goals, probably one of the more ugly hat tricks you're going to see. A couple banks in front of the net, but, uh, you know, they all count at the end of the day, so... Well, you had one goal on Friday night from essentially no angle down at the goal line. Talk about, let's run through that one. Unfortunately, I don't have it where I can pull it up and we can watch it live on the replay about it. But you're going down, and I believe you cut through the left or left lane of the ice, left wing, whatever you want to call it. You get down low, you pick your head up, and is it just, okay, like, hey, I'm just going to try to throw this to the net and maybe the goalie's going to spit it back out? Or it's like, oh, no, I see a window and I'm going to go for it there. Yeah, so actually on that play, like once I got down into the corner, um, I looked up and I could see Jurich going to the back door. Um, and, you know, a lot of goalies are going to, they're going to respect that, him coming down that side, thinking the puck's going to go that way. And uh, Babin came off his post a little bit there and I saw that little gap. And, you know, I thought, let's throw, let's throw it on there and see what happens. If it goes in, great. If not, you know, there could be a rebound there. We got guys going to the net. So, uh yeah, I saw him cheating off the post a little bit and was able to bank off the pad and go in. So, It kind of seems that the worst-case scenario for you right there in that situation is he just melts it down and it's an offensive zone face-off. And, you know, you could create a high-danger rebound or, you know, in the best-case scenario, you find the back of the net. And three goals and one assist, but you didn't have a goal going into the third period on Friday night, and the team also found themselves – uh, in a deficit going into the locker room. You guys got down early, 2 to nothing in Friday night's game. What was the talk in the locker room um, after the first 20 minutes? Yeah, I think uh, we, came out, we came out pretty good in the first five minutes of that game, and then kind of things didn't go our way, and we found ourselves, like you said, going down into the third period, and we knew that we hadn't played our best yet. Um, so we were just looking, you know, we had an opportunity to come out and play a good 20 minutes and win a hockey game and you can never really be upset about that. So, uh, you know, in that intermission, we were just, you know, pucks to the net. Let's let's just get some more traffic. We wanted to try to get more low shots on net. Um, Babin, Babin was catching all the pucks up high. You know, he's got a good glove hand. We wanted to try to get some pucks in his skates, create those second chance opportunities. And uh, obviously we were able to come out and we, we got one early. I think it was like the first 30 seconds of the third period. And, you know, that kind of gets the guys going. And, uh, I think it definitely went to our legs for the rest of the third period. And, you know, we played a good 20 minutes and we got a win. Yeah, our do you one better. It was actually 28 seconds in. And, of course, it was your goal way to not give yourself the shout-out right there and your line mates getting the assist, Gino D'Angelo and Tyler Jurich. And what is it with that line that had so much success this weekend? Or, you know, at least me personally, I feel like I hadn't seen that exact three combination uh, before we got to Motor City on Friday night. But you guys produced a ton of points this past weekend. Uh, yeah, I think uh, when I got here last year, um, you know, I started out with Gino and Jurich, so there was some familiarity there. Um, but I just think, yeah, we, we, it was just clicking in that third period. You know, my line mates are creating space. And that first goal, you know, like I said, it was a rebound in front of the net dirty goal but you know it banks in off a defenseman and go like they all count and uh i think as a line we've been we've been playing pretty well last weekend for sure i mean a couple goals not getting scored on so that's big 
Well, there's there's no pictures on the game sheet. I'm holding one right here. It doesn't tell you how it went in. It just tells you that it did go in. It also says that the Blackbirds are really controlling the game at the five-on-five five pace. Um, special teams uh, struggled a little bit to produce this week for the Black Bears. I think you guys would be the first ones to say that true. But you guys really dominated the game both Friday and Saturday while it was five-on-five on, five on the ice. Yeah, uh, I, I would definitely agree with what you said. You know, we were we were kind of feeling ourselves in the five on five. A um, couple tough penalties. Uh, we we know we got to clean up our PK for sure if we want to be uh, successful, especially this weekend coming up. Um, but yeah, you know, power play pucks moving around. It's just not going in. But we, you know, like that third period, we got that big power play goal from Jurich there. So that's huge. Um, you know, at a time like that, it's a big goal. So. I can take a one for five if, you know, we're scoring that one in the third period there. It's a big goal. Yeah, the the most important power play is always the next one, and that's the same with the next power play goal opportunity. And you set up Tyler Jurch for a one-timer, and Jurch was able to go through Babin's five hole, and that gave the Black Bears the first lead that they had all night. And the building, which was a sellout Friday night, just absolutely erupted. Do you think after the power play goal from Jurch that truly the game had shifted and you guys had seized all the momentum? Uh, yeah, for sure. I think, uh, like I said earlier, that scoring that quick one there definitely went to our legs. And then when we find uh, we find that power play goal there, I think it's it's definitely huge for us. And the building, was it was great all weekend, right? Uh, all the fans, you know, they were loud all weekend, up or down. So it was, yeah, it was a big goal, and we could definitely feel the game had shifted into our favor. And it was, at that point, we're just focusing on protecting that lead. We also want to give a big shout-out to our friends over at Lockheed Martin, not too far away from where we are in Binghamton over in Owego. Uh, their campus, uh, beautiful. Hopefully we can get some of the guys out there in the near future to take a tour. We are also able to raise a ton of money uh, for local veteran organizations with the Military Appreciation jersey. Uh, how did you guys like the design of the jersey? It seemed that you guys were kind of excited around the locker room when I brought them down for the first time, and some of you guys got to take your picture in them. And uh, but was there just any sense, uh, any more sense of, oh hey, like these look really good, or oh hey, like we need to go out there and you know play a little extra harder tonight? Uh, yeah, for sure. I think it's a, uh, it was an important weekend for not only the Americans but the Canadians as well. And uh, the jerseys were they were phenomenal. Uh, great job with the design. Um, I wasn't here last year for the military jerseys, but uh, I think these these stacked up pretty well with any other jersey that I saw, for sure. Well, that was the first specialty jersey this year for the Binghamton Black Bears. We have some more coming up in store, 50th anniversary for Binghamton, celebrating all the years and all the teams that have played right here in Broome County and also 50th, an or excuse me, I just said 50th anniversary and uh, this one might be coming a little under wraps. The design's not been made public yet, but ugly Christmas sweater jerseys this year for the Black Bears. So a whole lot of specialty jerseys. So if you were not able to win one in the live auction after the game, it is going to be okay. We have plenty of more specialty jerseys coming up later this season. Um, Tyson, let's talk about something that I asked Coach about, and it's about playing games back-to-back. -back. And Let's shift our focus from Motor City to this weekend in Delaware. And it's a weird circumstance. It's a home and home for the Black Bears this week. Friday night, the Black Bears will be on the road playing at 730 uh, in the Thunderdome that they call uh, for Delaware. And then driving back and playing the next day at home. What's the mindset about going to get your body ready to make the necessary changes like oh hey like you know friday night's going to be a long night but we also have to make sure that we're ready to go out and play a competitive game on saturday at home in front of our fans yeah i think uh obviously our main focus right now is friday night and then uh after that game you know the focus shifts to saturday just taking care of your body you know we're going to be on the bus for a while friday night but uh when you get back try to get a good night's sleep good rest uh uh, get up early the next day hopefully you know maybe come to the rink get a stretch or something like that get the body moving and then just all about how you're gonna you know take your fluids and, and get the food that you need into you after the game and uh, on Saturday as well and just do your best you can to be ready for the second game a big opportunity for the Black Bears to grab six more points let's stay on the topic of the bus and a little bit more of a lighthearted question for you are you a team pillow or team neck pillow for a long bus ride? 
Uh, I'm going to have to go pillow for sure. Okay. I'm also in the pillow department, but I was too afraid to bring a pillow on the first road trip of the season because I thought you guys would make fun of me. But I'm glad I have someone like you, Tyson, to stick up for me next time I bring a full-size pillow on the Black Bears bus. And finally, uh, Tyson, just just to reiterate it one more time, congratulations on your second hat trick of the season. Also a four-point night. You were the first star of the game Friday night. And uh, we hope that the scoring continues for you. It seems that you have gotten the monkey off your shoulders. You know, knock on wood three times. Don't ever want to jinx it. But, Tyson, again, thank you for spending some time with us here on a Tuesday night, and good luck on Friday. Thank you very much. Canadian Pilsner. Magic 1017. Best radio station. Keeps getting better. Better music selection. Best ever! Best ever! <laughs> Makes me feel better. Number one for music and fun. It's like the best ever. Magic 1017. 100% local. Are you looking for a new place to live? Lofts at JC is the official housing partner of the Binghamton Black Bears and the only luxury housing provider offering both two and three bedroom units fully furnished for a modern living lifestyle. Lofts at JC is century located in the heart of the Tri-Cities area located at 128 Grand Avenue in Johnson City. Housing applications are accepted. Complex has beautiful one, two, and three bedroom units. Fill out an application today at lofts at jc.com. Black Bears are up three to nothing here in the second period. And the Delaware Thunder do a good job of getting the puck off of the faceoff. But the Black Bears four check right back at it where they left off in period number one. They're looking for more here in the second frame. Turnover right outside the blue line, and D'Angelo has it on his stick. The lefty tries to stick handle, throws it deep for Kirkby. And Kirkby, who is outsizing Wilson, gets taken down to the ice. A good hit laid on by Houston Wilson. 
Fitzgerald will main the blue line and just indirect it down low, waiting for Jurich or Kirkby to get into position. Merkel thought about choking down low, but instead decides to get out to neutralize. This is icing against Delaware as the puck was played behind the center line. We're bringing it 200 feet and come all the way back into the Delaware zone. Thompson, Parker, and Ivoshkin back out on the ice. Their first shift of the second period. Ivoshkin right in the slot looking for his hat trick. Has it roll off of his stick at the last second. This is not icing against Delaware as the Black Bears pass came all the way back into the defensive zone. That allows Delaware to get some fresh bodies out onto the ice. No icing waved on by the linesman. As Delaware is first to it, J.C. Moritz tries to rim it all the way around the boards. It will escape the zone. Icing coming up, though, against Delaware as nobody touches the puck once again, and we bring it all the way back. Excite Motorsports chuck a puck coming up in the second intermission tonight. As Parker throws a centering pass, leaves it right around in the slot. Ivoshkin looking for the hat trick is denied. And Schultz, the wrist shot goes over the net of McHale. And the Black Bears, though, still in control of the puck down low. They throw it to an open corner. Schultz choking down. He's one of those hybrid guys who we will see play forward a little bit later on in the season, I'm sure. Played some forward last year as well and talked about being a Swiss Army knife helps guys stay around and they love a guy who leads by example from the captain. Wrist shot put on by Emma Titus is steered aside by McVeigh and pass off the boards for Thompson. Centering pass over to Brett Parker. It's behind him but Schultz finds the loose change. Puck right on the goal line. Referee washes it out. It's underneath McHale. Whistle's blown and no further play. The Black Bears have e-gift cards available. You can choose the look of the card, how much to put on it, and send it through email. It can be used for tickets or merchandise. Black Bears e-gift cards available right now at BinghamtonBlackBears.com. It's getting ready to be the holiday season as you take a look at the Heinz Energy replay. That puck going off a defender and a post. Movali going down to his face, right in the blue paint, trying to force the puck off of the goal line. Did a good job as maybe a little bit of English on the shot coming off the post. Stays out of the net and the game remains at 3 0. Just a note for everybody at home Austin Weber wearing 16 tonight, not 19 that he wore last night. And Alex Susi is wearing 18. I've been lost in translation a little bit here, so if I was lost, I thought I would pass it along to all of our good friends. Back home, Mac Lewis will lose the faceoff to Weber. And Delaware will try to rim it all the way around the board, trying to exit the zone. Yarwood held the line momentarily, but here comes O'Reilly. O'Reilly in a two-on-two -two situation, falls down to the ice as he loses an edge. Slick ice after the Zamboni comes out in the first couple of minutes of the period. Black Bears escape harm as Boussel will skate out to center ice. Back ended over to Thompson. Thompson, excuse me, that's Anderson. Anderson will indirect it, and the pass gets intercepted by 99 in white. Ricky Regala. Margala playing in his first game in this building as an opposer to the Binghamton Black Bear as Boussel throws a wrist shot way wide of the net. Anderson has his stick tied up legally at the blue line by Susie and Susie will skate over to the bench. He's wearing a full shield just like Anderson as well. Yarwood crosses the line on sides, tries to dangle around Regala and Regala stands his ground and sends Yarwood down to the ice. You know that's got to feel good for Regala, the former Black Bear laying a hit on a current Black Bear. And now Binghamton will skate out into neutral ice. Two on two. Jurich drops it back for Kirkby, but it gets a defender skate on the way through. Delaware trying to exit the zone right onto the stick of Jurich, and he gets run into by Basie. Basie down low, trying to clear the crease. And now Kirkby with it. Behind the net for Jurich. Jurich through D'Angelo, out in front, just wide of the target. Kirkby thought about trying to go down low. Kirkby catches a stick up high as he was falling down to the ice, looking at the referee to make a call. They're not going to provide one this time. 
Jurich on the wrist shot, turnaround, no good, and look out, partial breakaway for Wilson, but a great back check by Colin Fitzgerald. Takes away the partial breakaway opportunity for the Thunder. And now Fitzgerald is able to skate out to neutralize and carry the puck on his stick. All by himself, has it swiped away, but Jurich now throws it down low for Fitzgerald. Fitzgerald looks for a friend to pass to, just throws it to the net. Not a bad decision. Kirkby throws a wrist shot right out in front, and it's melted down. No for the play. Julia, four minutes gone so far, and it seems that Binghamton is really keeping up with that tempo and the pace of play that they had in period number one. Yeah, we see even our defensemen pinching in and adding to the four check. Always good when the defenseman jump the rush as Parker will steer a backhand over to the net of McCall. McCall will melt it down once again. And you know in our league that the defensemen really love to score. Everybody loves offense. You see a lot of high scoring games and uh, that has a lot to do with defensemen jumping in, pinching down from the blue line. We'll see if the Black Bears can get some production from their blue line a little bit later on in tonight's game. They do have an assist as Matu Boy Lard does have one. He's the lone defenseman with a point tonight so far in the action as the Black Bears find themselves up by three. Delaware throws this down. This is no icing as it was tipped at the blue line, indicated by the linesman. Corgan drops it back for Oganezov as Oganezov's shot will miss everything. Ivashkin now against Oganezov. Ivashkin trying to go to the wraparound. Puck rolls off of his stick. Nowhere near the net and Thompson watch it glide past him. Now, unfortunately for Thompson that time, a little bit more involved as a spectator than he was a player and takes away the opportunity for the Black Bears. Delaware is allowed to dump it in down low, roll the change. Long second period change. That means that the defensemen will see a lot more time on ice and a, a big emphasis for the Black Bears and Thunder to get the puck really down low. Thompson in alone, trying to go to the short side off of the post. It beat the goaltender but couldn't beat the medal. Thompson now runs into the referee, shrugs off the official. And now right at the blue line in front of the Black Bears bench, the Thunder will escape the zone. Ivashkin though, back checking really hard, but Binghamton crosses the line offside. We'll get some thoughts coming up and more. 14.33 left to go here in the second period as the Worldwide Sports Supply ice crew makes its way onto the ice. Black Bears lead three to nothing. On Fox 14.30. Bowling Center located at 119 Jennings Street in Endicott has 38 amazing lanes of bowling, large video screens and automatic scoring. But that's not all. Ideal Bowling Center has a newly remodeled bar with six televisions, billiards, darts, and quick draw to entertain you. Don't forget about Ideal Bowling Center's snack counter for your appetite and a pro shop for all your bowling needs. Ideal Bowling Center, 119 Jennings Street in Endicott. Or call 607-748-3546. Say yes to RAV4 and say yes to available all-wheel drive. With all-wheel drive, you can go the fun way. Who needs roads anyway? Say yes to RAV4. Toyota, let's go places. Now back to more Black Bears hockey on Fox Sports 1430 Binghamton. Welcome back to the action. Brooksville along with my partner tonight, Julia De Mola filling in for Alex Jones, who could have been on the Court Jester Athletic Club. Injuries and scratches tonight. Dealing with a sickness back at home, we want to wish Alex and his family the best wishes and a speedy recovery. Hopefully he can make it back out on Wednesday. Black Bears win the faceoff in neutral zone, and now the puck is down low into the Black Bears tunnel right out in front of Owen Liskowitz, who is the backup goaltender tonight. Positioned right out in front of the FPHL dasher. Wilson now trying to get on his backhand, and Schultz sends his man down to the ice. What a hip check by Jake Schultz on Houston Wilson. Wilson's going to feel all of that one tomorrow morning as uh, Schultz is out of his weight class and height class as well. And the captain got the better of number seven dressed in white right there. Puck down low now. Jesse Anderson trying to be the first one to it. Basie will just whack at it. Lacrosse style. Puck becomes available. Boylar throws a wrist shot. Never made it through as Wilson. Just unfortunate shift for him as he eats a shot from the defenseman Boylar. And Boylar perhaps maybe having one of the heaviest slap shots on the team, especially from the blue line production. Wilson's been hit into the wall, down to the ice, and blocked a shot from a one-timing defenseman. You've got to know that he's feeling it right now. 13.25 left to go here in period number two as Kirkby and Oak, no, not Oganezov. That's Ricky Regala, two former Black Bears now playing for the Thunder. 
get acquainted with each other. Centering pass out in front. Kirkby in a toe save made by McHale. Sprawling in the splits is Mike McHale, keeping this a three-goal game. Black Bears yet to find the score sheet yet in period number two. Good display of stick handling from Dennis Garfoff. And Gafaroff gets a ooh and a ah from the crowd, but unfortunately won't be able to get a shot off as Delaware has to touch up on the delayed offsides. Kirkby looking for a friend to pass to. Throws it too far out ahead of D'Angelo. And Alion will take control of the puck, but another turnover for the Kirkby line as Kirkby has it now down low. Second man in for the Black Bears is Gino D'Angelo. Two on two, fight for it down low. Finds the stick of the right-handed shooting. Tyler Jurich, one-timer from Yarwood, just wide of the target. Walters will choose to pinch in, and a possible two-on-one coming the other way, and Yarwood will just have to indirect it off of the wall behind everybody. Binghamton turns it over once again to Delaware, but more importantly, they're able to get some fresh bodies out on the ice. 12-13 left to go here in the period. And Aloyan steers it on his backhand, turns it right over to Nikita Ivashkin. Parker was calling for it, but Ivashkin puts a little bit too much mustard on that pass. Binghamton has to come back in their own end and collect it. And now Parker pulls it back on his forehand, throws a wrist shot that's deflected by Moritz out in front, into the netting and out of play. 11.51 left to go. And shots on goal now, Binghamton 25. And 14 from the visitors from Delaware. And it looks like our friend Ben, the in-house PA, has found the Muckles student of the game. Ben doing a good job as the PA host, as he does every night. Face-off, one back by Delaware, but Yarwood holds the blue line. They're swinging a knuckle puck and just keep it in the zone temporarily. Now Thompson throws a wrist shot, seeking it forward. The crossbar just over top of the pipe. And the Thunder are able to push it out to neutralize. Black Bears will tag back up. And 88-25 and 8 will make their way back out on the ice. You have the great 8 line, Parker and Avashin, who've been playing so well together. And you also have the jackpot line of Mac Lewis and Jesse Anderson as you have 77 and 7. Just a little tidbits that I picked up in my spare time to help the day go by a little bit faster. Delaware with an opportunity now as it tops the stick of Wilson at the last second. It deflects into the netting and out of play with 11.04 left to go. And Julia, what do you think is going to be the key for Delaware to try to mount a comeback and get back in this game? Delaware has to get the puck into the Binghamton zone and just start peppering McVeigh with shots. We haven't seen many from them this period. And here we take a face off in Binghamton zone and hopefully they throw one on net. Both of the teams getting a little bit of a head start on the face off dot. They got to stay outside the line until the puck is dropped. And Merkel will take the face off. That was one back by Binghamton, but it'll be Delaware who controls it momentarily. Thompson tries to pass it to himself off of the wall, but a little too much on it. Roussel, though, first to it, tries to get it down low for Anderson. The Thunder try to exit the zone, but Merkel choking down from the blue line. Toes the blue paint, keeps it in. Regala with a good stick handle around Mac Lewis, and now here comes Corgan. Corgan with it on his forehand, throws it into the open corner, and deflected off of the stick of Merkel and out of play. We have another offensive zone faceoff coming up for Delaware. Face off one back by Mac Lewis. As the crowd gets energized here with the energy meter and now Jamie Bussell skating in, has it hop on his stick a couple of times and he rings the post right off of the ice. Just barely got it off the ground, off of the iron and stays out of the net. Binghamton has hit two posts so far in the period. Merkel now with the puck after the Black Bears tag up. He tries to steer it down low for Lewis and now Jesse Anderson down low, uses the referee as a side pick, creates a little bit of separation. Net comes off its pegs as Lewis was hit into the net. And Basie and Lewis appear to be tangled up a little bit. But it looks like cooler heads are going to prevail here. Basie's had a quiet game, and we know from last year that you don't want to mess with him. So I'm a little shocked, but good for the Black Bears. Shot from Roussel just rings the bottom of the post on a knuckle-style puck. 
Linesman will put the net back on its pegs. And 10.02, we're almost halfway through the second period here tonight. Second period brought to you by our friends over at Lofts at JC, the official housing partners of the Binghamton Black Bears. Proud sponsor of all the second periods all season long. Austin Thompson loses the faceoff to Wilson. Delaware's done a good job in the faceoff dot once again. However, they've had a hard time of exiting their own zone when they win those defensive faceoffs. Now Kirby with it down low, looking for Boylar. Boylar throws a wrist shot that just goes over the glove and head of McHale. Delaware is able to push it all the way back out to center ice. Nobody able to get off, though, as the Black Bears first to it. It's Gino D'Angelo flying in with a head of steam. Schultz skating in, maybe hoping for a centering pass, has it hop over his skit, stick rather. And Schultz now will go D to D with Matu Boylar. And Delaware applying pressure on the four check. That puck bounces its way all the way down into the Delaware end. And D'Angelo pressuring his man and leads to another turnover. Tyson Kirkby looking for a Black Bear to pass to. There's a lot in the way. And it's going to be a shot from Schultz that's saved by the goaltender. Jerge looking for a call. 9-11 left to go. We'll recap that play when we come back. You're listening to Black Bears Hockey on Fox 1430. Ideal Bowling Center located at 119 Jennings Street in Endicott has 38 amazing lanes of bowling, large video screens, and automatic scoring. But that's not all. Ideal Bowling Center has a newly remodeled bar with six televisions, billiards, darts, and quick draw to entertain you. Don't forget about Ideal Bowling Center's snack counter for your appetite and a pro shop for all your bowling needs. Ideal Bowling Center, 119 Jennings Street in Endicott, or call 607-748-3546. Calling all hockey fans, we are celebrating 50 years of Binghamton hockey this weekend as the Binghamton Black Bears take on the Mississippi Sea Wolves on Friday and Saturday night. It's going to be a great weekend. Get your tickets now. Welcome back to the action. Brooks Hill along with Julia DeMola tonight here. And the Black Bears find themselves up three to nothing. Nobody's scoring yet in the period, but Julia, you take a look at the shots on goal and Binghamton is doubling up Delaware 28 to 14. That was not the case last night in Delaware. It seems to be any time Delaware gets possession of the puck, we're just able to poke it away from them and keep it in the offensive zone. Black Bears have had a ton of offensive zone time tonight. Unfortunately, I don't have an official tracker to keep tabs on it, but you're just going to have to take my word for it. As Delaware wins the faceoff, they will exit the zone, but they give it right back to Boylar. Boylar might have faked himself out, but it worked out for the best as now he ups the puck for Ivoskin. Ivoskin with two goals already in tonight's game, has goals now in seven straight games for the Black Bears, and that is a franchise record in scoring streak. Schultz tries to self-pass around a defender. Instead, it works out for the Black Bears as they get it down low, but one pass too many as the saucer from Austin Thompson might have caught Ivoskin up high. Ivoskin appears to be okay. Play is now on sides for Delaware as they cross into the blue line, but they will steer it down low, go off for a change, get some fresh bodies out on the ice. Austin Thompson now will cross the line, but they are off sides. With 8.23 left to go in the period. Get a good look at our friend Elise Wilbur, the athletic trainer for the Binghamton Black Bears in her second season. Our friends over at UHS doing a wonderful job as always. And Elise, a really friendly face to have around the locker room and know the guys love her sense of humor. Newberg back out onto the ice now. With JT Walters, haven't seen a ton of Josh Newberg tonight. He was a scratch last night and is the extra forward tonight. And Newberg will be the first man in going up against Ricky Regala. Newberg tries to poke it away from his former teammate. That puck fought to be from this angle, touching the netting. But the referees say play on, and we will continue. Eight minutes left to go here in the period. And it gets steered down low. Mac Lewis... Falls down to the ice, might have lost his edge or hit a dry spot. The blade will go right through a dry spot and send you right down to the ice. Good forecheck pressure by Bussell, trying to twist and turn his way around. Good stick handle, centering pass out in front for Yarwood, who had a yawning net, and Yarwood can't convert on it, but the Black Bears keep it in temporarily. The next pass comes off of a Delaware skate and brought back 
into the Binghamton and JT Walters now matched up with his teammate Cam Yarwood leads Yarwood a little bit too much as Yarwood will just have to slap it all the way down off the high glass. O'Reilly throws it out to neutralize. Nobody home for Delaware. And it seems that every time the Delaware just gets to the puck, they're just throwing it right back into the Binghamton in, allowing the Black Bears to take control. Yarwood steers it outside the zone. And now it'll be Delaware's opportunity to start a breakout. Alex Susi has some words for his teammates, officials, and maybe even the Black Bears as he now sits down back on the bench. He was standing up and yelling on the bench, and now Fitzgerald crosses the line. Fitzgerald, one of those offensive playing defensemen who is yet to find the goal sheet, yet he's picked up an assist so far this season. And D'Angelo now crosses the line on sides, has his head up. He stops in the faceoff dot, leaves it back for Merkel. Merkel throws a wrist shot nowhere close to the target, but it's okay because Fitzgerald chokes down from his spot, and the Black Bears maintain control. And now Jurich with it on his backhand, Trying to turn around for Thompson. And a good save by McHale out in front. Puck is still available. Second shot follow up by Jurich. Goes wide of the target. Fitzgerald down to Merkel. D to D. At the blue line, Merkel throws an easy wrist shot. That's detected into the catcher's mitt of the goaltender. 6.13 left to go here in period number two. Shots on goal now. 29 for Binghamton and 14 for Delaware. Kirby now with control of the puck as the Black Bears still lead 3-0 coming off of the offensive zone faceoff. Binghamton will have to go all the way down the ice, but Merkel turns it over temporarily to Wilson. Fitzgerald ups it over to Thompson. They cross the line on sides, and Thompson back to Kirby. Here goes State to Stick on a backhand pass, looking for Jurich on the back door. A little too far. It's unattainable. Centering pass out in front off a defenseman. And McHale will swallow up, and Movali was really chasing after Kirby right there, and Movali had some words for 17 dressed in black after that quick little skirmish. And we see Susie chirping at Kirby here still. Delaware has been getting chippier in this period. You can tell that Susie is visibly frustrated with how the game has been going on so far. He doesn't have a goal to show for it yet. Ivoshkin has two. He has control of the faceoff here. Leave it back for Fitzgerald. Pass in the slot for Ivoshkin. Looking for the hat trick. Becomes available in the slot. Parker has a backhand shot go wide. Looking for Thompson in the same spot that the first shooter was in. And now the Thunder escape harm. They cross the line on sides. And Riley McVeigh finally gets to see a puck for the first time in a while. As here just strap it in his mitt with 5.25 left to go in the middle frame. Play continues on. It's a high sky ball for Nikita Ivosh. And a little bit too far wide for the partial breakaway. Austin Thompson trying to connect on the centering pass. Doesn't get everything on it. A slap shot from a low angle. Saved by McHale now. The captain, Jake Schultz, with it on his stick. Throws it cross ice to Thompson. Wrist shot back door. Ivosh scores. And there's the hat trick. Nikita Ivosh with his first hat trick of the year. It's 4 nothing, Binghamton. And we see the hats flying onto the ice from the fans here. They didn't miss a beat. Third hat trick of the season for the Black Bears, and that gets the crowd on their feet. 5.03 left to go here in the period, and the Black Bears are on top four, nothing. Nikita Ivoshkin with his third of the night. He was, now, he was just there waiting on the doorstep, and it's another case of that right place at the right time as the puck goes into the net. Take a look at the Heinz energy replay. Ivoshkin right on the back door, caught the pass, and he was left all alone on the far post and the hats get cleaned up thanks to our friends at the Worldwide Sports Supply Ice Crew 
5.03 left to go, and the Black Bears are up by four. Black Bears win the faceoff as Bussell tried to one-hand it into the zone. They have to tag up, and now JT Walters crosses the line. Play is on sides. Walters shot wide of the net. Another backhand pass as Moritz sends a man down to the ice. Penalty coming up against Delaware as this will be interference against the Thunder. We're talking about the penalty when we come back. What you need to know is Nikita Ivashkin, with his first hat trick of the season, puts the Black Bears on the board in this period. They now lead 4 to nothing. Don't go anywhere, folks. You're listening to Binghamton Hockey on Fox 1430 in Binghamton. It looks like we have a couple of options for the Bricks Barber Company Clip of the Week as Nikita Ivoshkin is putting on a goal-scoring clinic here just over the halfway point of the game. 4.45 left to go here in the period. We have a Delaware penalty to J.C. Moore. It's two minutes for interference, and Julia, the Black Bears power play, already has a goal tonight, has the opportunity to come back out and grab another goal. We've been working on special teams and we just want to see them convert and here's our opportunity. Black Bears came in tonight with a lackluster power play average, or excuse me, operating at a 17 and a half percent. With one power play goal already tonight, they are officially one for two on the score sheet as they get a little miscombobulated off of the faceoff zone. Black Bears now appear to be Back in the right, Ivoshkin crosses the line on sides. Still has the puck on his stick. He'll give it up for Jake Schultz, the captain. They work the puck down low. Ivoshkin now behind the net. He'll just softly glide it on his backhand to Matu Boylar. Two defensemen out there for Coach Gary Gill's club right now. But a turnover from Austin Thompson allows Delaware to throw it all the way down. McVay calling for the icing. Might have forgot that his team was on the power play. But not to his fault. He hasn't seen a lot of pucks so far this period. Jake Schultz now. Will indirect it off a of defenseman. He gets it right back. Thompson now with it in the faceoff dot. And Jake Schultz now, three men manning the blue line for the Black Bears as everybody tries to get back to their regularly scheduled spots. Finds its way into the corner. Austin Thompson gets pressured. He gets run into by Weber. And Weber will just backhand the puck out of the zone from his knees. A good hustle play by Weber. 40 seconds left to go in the penalty to J.C. Moritz. And 3.20 left to go here in the lofts at JC, second period. Power play unit number one back out on the ice. Cam Yarwood starts the breakout from behind his own net. Jurich will FIFA it. World Cup doesn't start till Monday. And now the puck is down low for Tyson Kirkby. And Bussell now is trade places with each other. As Kirkby is just content to stay behind his own net, waste some precious seconds off of the clock unintentionally. Yarwood. Back to Jurich, Jurich back to Yarwood as those two will play a catch. Yarwood steers it back to Kirkby, and Kirkby throws a wrist shot that's swallowed up by the goaltender. Two seconds left to go in the penalty with 2.48 left to go. And our next home game is Wednesday, Thanksgiving Eve, and our special is two for one beers as we take on the Danbury Hat Tricks at 6 p.m. Thank you, Julia. That's right, a 6 p.m. start on Wednesday. That's November 23rd, Thanksgiving Eve, or the day before Thanksgiving. Come out and see the hometown Black Bears take on the Danbury Hat Tricks for two-for-one beer night. That's right, folks, two-for-one beer. Great opportunity, and the penalty is over the Delaware Thunder kill off the interference penalty, as it appears that D'Angelo was given a rough ride down low by Basie. You talked about that a lot earlier in the broadcast, Julia, about the physical play of Basie. You don't want to quote-unquote poke the bear, and it looks like D'Angelo might have caught the bad side 
of Basie right there. Turnaround shot available in the slot. D'Angelo can get the last laugh. He turns it around, and Mikhail will swallow up. And good seeing Gino getting right back up on his feet after that heavy hit laid on by Basie. Yeah, Gino likes to be in front of the net and getting back up and getting back in the play. He's hungry for another goal as we haven't seen one from him in a while. 2 excuse me, 2.19 left to go here in the period as the noise meter gets cranked up once again. A line change for the Black Bears. Ivashkin, Thompson, and Parker come out with Walters and Yarwood, the two defensemen. Face off one back by Chris Corgan from Delaware. And Emma Titus will try to escape the zone. He indirects it off of the boards, but Ivoshkin does a good job of keeping it in at the blue line. Thunder just having a hard time keeping the Black Bears off of the four check. And credit Coach Gill, Coach Reynolds, and Kyle Powell, a honorary bench coach for the time being, as icing is waved off. Linesman saying that Yarwood could have played that puck a little bit sooner. Uh, they've been really pushing the team to stay heavy on the forecheck in these last two games. The forecheck has been the difference maker so far in the game. A clean hit on Austin Thompson. Ivoshkin looking for more. And Walters and Emma Titus going at it. Walters already throws his gloves off. And Emma Titus just goes into the fetal position, ducking down. He takes exception to the hit laid on Austin Thompson. And Walters is headed to the locker room. He immediately, Amatai is not wanting anything to do with JT Walters. See how this one is going to be scored up. They had no call on the initial hit. We're seeing if we can get a replay. Brought to you by our friends over at Heinz Energy. And we'll see how this one comes in the is. official score oh, sheet. They tricked us there. It started. They just want to make sure they get the right angle. We want to give a big shout out to all of our friends in the video room. For, and here we go, Heinz Energy Replay. So Thompson might have caught a knee, and JT Walters took exception to that. Now this is going to be at the bottom of the screen. Walters immediately laying a hit. Heavy gloves starts pulling on the jersey, and Emma Titus not wanting anything to do with it, just getting his head above his head and down on the ice in the turtle position. And very quickly, the referees just send JT Walters right to the locker room. We'll get a head start on the intermission report with a minute 36 left to go. Black Bears lead four to nothing here. And if this is given a major but to JT Walters, this could be a big opportunity for the Thunder having extended time on the power play trying to convert. They'll definitely try to shift momentum here if that's what's granted, but it looks like we're still trying to figure it out as the refs are talking to captains at center ice. Ninety-six seconds remain. As the let's go video comes on. Trying to get the crowd enthusiastic here inside the arena. They've been cheering here tonight. And Lofts at JC, second period, about to wrap up. Nobody in the penalty box for the Black Bears. Still nothing coming through on the official stat sheet on federalhockey.com. As soon as it comes in, we will let you know. The ref's explaining something to Coach Gill at the bench, but I don't see a call. I do see, however, only three people dressed in black out on the ice, and there's the fourth. Mac Lewis a little bit late off of the bench, so it is going to be a five-minute major to JT Walters, and five-minute major gives Delaware an opportunity to come right back into the game, gives us an opportunity to talk about our friends over at the Northeastern Striping Corporation. Penalty kill once again, which is so far three for three tonight for the Black Bears. Now Weber with it at the blue line. Face-off win by Delaware. Wilson will replace him. And Wilson now in control of the puck. He drops it back for his teammate Gafferoff. Gafferoff leaves it for Wilson, and Wilson runs into a brick wall. That is Jake Schultz with a big C on his chest. Standing tall, the defenseman at the point. And a wrist shot, put, or excuse me, a slap shot from Corgan right into the shin guards of Mac Lewis, and it hits off of the shin so hard it bounces all the way back into the Delaware end. A minute left to go here 
In period number two, the Black Bears forwards will change Anderson and Bussell, second group out for the penalty kill unit. Four minutes and 15 seconds left to go in the penalty. See if Delaware can grab one here in the final seconds of the period. It's steered away for Dennis Gafferoff, and Gafferoff throws it back for Corgan. Corgan will play catch with Gafferoff. Gafferoff just outside the faceoff dot. Throws a wrist shot, looking for a tip out in front. Susie sends it high in the net. Yarwood just winds up and tries to slap it out, but Weber holds the blue line. Puck still in the zone. 30 seconds left to go. A wrist shot blocked on the way through by Schultz, and Bousseau collects the loose change and shoves it down the ice, killing time and allows the Black Bears to make a wholesale line change while they're down a man. 3.40 left to go in the penalty. 15 seconds left to go in the frame. Delaware having a hard time getting out of their own end as the Black Bears continue to apply pressure. Eight seconds left to go. Wilson crosses the line on side, stepped in by Gafferoff. Three seconds left to go. Gafferoff tries to get it to his forehand. Didn't have any clock awareness and skates out the puck as the horn sounds. It's 4-0 Binghamton after the second period. And Julia, the Black Bears, while they don't score the same amount of goals, they add one more. Nikita Ivashkin gets the hat trick are in well control of this hockey game. Yeah, you never want to give up the four check because as you can see, we just took a five minute major and Delaware is going to go to the locker room and try to capitalize on that next period. Officially coming in as a five minute major for fighting, the gloves were off, it, even though it was not much of a fight. Emma Titus did not want to have any part of JT Walters and we will send it to commercial. Come back with more. We have a whole lot in store on the Excite Motorsports Intermission Report. Don't go anywhere, folks. Binghamton up by four over the Delaware Thunder. You're listening to Black Bears Hockey on Fox 1430 in Binghamton. Fans, come get a head start on your Thanksgiving holiday weekend this Wednesday at 6 p.m. and watch the Binghamton Black Bears take on the Danbury Hat Tricks. It's two-for-one beer night inside the arena. Come dressed in your favorite Black Bears apparel as we black out the rink on the day before Thanksgiving. Get your tickets now at BinghamtonBlackBears.com or call the office at 607-722-7367 today. Power outages are a thing of the past when you have a Generac home standby generator installed by the team at American Electric. Give them a call today or visit them on the web at aegenerators.com. If you're looking to install a beautiful, durable, and handcrafted countertop, call Alice James Construction. The Southern Tier's most trusted stone fabrication will design and install your dream countertop and let you choose from a premium selection of natural stones like marble, granite, or quartzite. Stone or granite countertops starting as low as $35 per square foot installed. Schedule your free quote and receive a free sink with your countertop project. Call 607-275-5495. Getting your hands on an all-new CF Moto side-by-side -side or four-wheeler is now easier than ever at ExciteMotorsports.com. Purchase your next power sports vehicle with our new, easy, and quick online buying experience. Browse inventory on ExciteMotorsports.com. Buy. Get approved for financing and e-sign online right from your phone. Ride. Have your new power sports vehicle delivered to your home the next day at no extra charge. Browse. Buy. Ride. Fun starts here at ExciteMotorsports.com. Whether you're a high school or college athlete or a weekend warrior, Guthrie is the area's premier sports medicine program, offering injury evaluation, concussion management, physical therapy, and more. With a full team of providers across New York and Pennsylvania offering same or next day appointments, Guthrie gets you back in the game as quickly as possible. Call the Guthrie Sports Medicine team today at 866-GUTHRIE or learn more at guthrie.org slash sportsmed. Now it's time to take a look back from the previous Tully's Good Times with Coach Show. Make sure to subscribe to the Binghamton Black Bears YouTube page so you can catch every show. Join us Tuesday, November 29th at 6 p.m. 
Come join myself, Brooks Hill, along with head coach Gary Gill and the entire Black Bears 2022 and 23 roster as we take a deep dive into the Black Bears season recaps this past weekend's game and look ahead to the future. Tully's on the Vestal Parkway, home of the Tully's Good Times with Coach Show. We cannot wait to see you out there. Welcome back in for another edition of the Tully's Good Times with Coach Show. And now I'm joined by a Black Bears goaltender, number 31 and number 1, sometimes Riley McVeigh all the way from Calgary, Alberta. And Riley, thanks for you, for you uh, spending some time with us here on a Tuesday night. Yeah, thank you very much for having me. Well, um, let's go ahead and just deep dive right into it. I assume with being from Calgary... Uh, you know, the battle for Alberta, always big at the national level. I would assume that you are a big Flames guy. Is that safe to say? Yeah, yeah, I definitely uh, battle over Alberta. I'll take the Flames every time. So. Okay, all right. Well, that's good. Just sometimes you just have to ask and make sure. You know, I've met people in New York who cheer for Boston and people in Philadelphia who cheer for Pittsburgh. Mm-hmm. It uh, doesn't really make a whole lot of sense to me, but you always want to be polite before you ask. And, Riley, you were able to uh, join the team late uh this year and you've been able to make a couple of starts now you made your first start in Danbury uh, a couple of weeks ago and you had a amazing performance coming off of the bench in Elmira in just your second game of the season and now you finally have your first weekend at home under wraps and behind you and let's just go ahead and talk about that what was it like playing at home versus playing on the road yeah, obviously playing at home in front of your home fans is uh, is a lot better than playing on the road, and you can kind of go through your own routines at the rink and everything's set up there and have everything that you need. So, um, And it's great playing in front of the fans here. We have awesome fans here, and uh, yeah, it was a really fun experience for my uh, first two games. It was a back-to-back start for you, and we've talked about conditioning and fatigue all throughout with Coach Gill, with Tyson, mm-hmm. everything like that. Now, as a goaltender... A lot of times you don't see guys play on back-to-back days, but talk about what you do to help make sure that your body's in the right shape to where you can play two nights in a row if need be. Yeah, I think a lot of it's just kind of making sure throughout the week that you're taking care of your body um, so that when this this time does come that you are kind of prepared to. Um, And then obviously just before and after, just making sure that you're stretching out and doing everything necessary. If something's egging you, just make sure you take care of it that night. And um, I always like to get to the ring kind of the next day and a little stretch out and mobility. So just kind of get ready for the next night. You know, I did notice that on Saturday when I went through the locker room dropping off some pieces of paper uh, for the guys, maybe who just wanted to check the box score from the night before or anything like that, that you were already laying there on the ground with the foam roller and uh, you were in some motions that I cannot make myself. (laughs) But I guess that's why you play goalie and I wear a suit. So it was just something for everybody at home to see that you know Riley is one of those guys first to the rink and making sure that he stretches out um, because you know with goalies essentially you have to be the most flexible person on the team you go a lot more east to west than anybody else does and you know there's always a case of injury um, you know in the lower body particularly you know in the groin area if you try to kick off you don't hit the post all those kind of things and coach Reynolds was very complimented of you in the Tully's coaches corner pregame on Saturday afternoon he was talking to me about how well you move east to west and we've talked about it with Owen and Joe a little bit earlier in the season but some people might just think that the goalies are there you know just to be almost like practice dummies and like oh just stop the puck what are some things that goalies are working on in practice that might not get seen from someone who maybe just comes by stands on the glass or you know sees a clip on Twitter or Instagram yeah, I mean, there there is a lot that kind of goes behind it and uh, just the difference between me, Owen, and uh, Chef. We all are very different styles, um, so we all have things that we have to work on ourselves to make sure that we can play to the highest of our abilities. Um, but it's just like the small things, um, just technical work and, uh, you know, a lot of footwork in and around the net and whatnot. So um, for me, like a couple of things that I, especially with my size, I try to get to the top of the crease as much as I can. and make sure that I am kind of presenting myself, making myself big. And then um, obviously my mobility, uh, just being a shorter guy too, I try to make up to it with my speed, like you said, going east to west. Um, So those are just kind of things you work on in practice, whether that be before, after, or even during practice sometimes. So um, you just kind of find what you you have to work on and you know as a goalie what, what your strengths and weaknesses are, so. You had 26 saves 
in night number one on Friday, and then you had 30 saves in night two, and you guys were doing a good job offensively um, on really all, all of the nights. You put a ton of shots on goal. Shots on goal Friday night were 27, but on Saturday night it became 48. And is it sometimes easy to – lose focus for just a second when you, your guys are having so much offensive zone time and you're not seeing a whole lot of shots in a period. What does a goalie do to like stay like mentally locked in and be like, okay, like the puck could literally come down here at any second or you know, I have to make a save or I'm going to have to skate out of the crease and make a play on it? Yeah, that's definitely uh, a part of hockey for a goalie that's tough, especially when your team's putting up a ton of shots on the other end and you're kind of just waiting there. Um, I'd say the biggest thing is you just try to stay uh, just mentally checked in, just following the puck and just being ready for the next shot because obviously, like you said, at, at any moment that puck can come down and, and when it does, it happens quick. So, uh, yeah, you just kind of, even if there's kind of a lull there for five or ten minutes, which there was at the start of the game, I, I do remember looking up at the shots and at one point I think it was 12 or 13 to 3. So we put we put up a ton of shots there the first uh, half of the first and uh, you just you know, try to follow the puck and stay kind of most focused as you can. You know, I had a friend who played club hockey or travel hockey in high school back down in North Carolina, and he always said that he would do, like, math equate, like, he would give himself, like, math problems. And, yeah, and the thing was, is, like, he was in the same level math that I was. Like, we're not in, like, me and him are not in advanced, like, upper level math. Like, we're doing the basic stuff here. And... He's like, oh, yes, yeah. so, you know, if you know you're doing good, like, sometimes, like, if you stumped yourself because you're really thinking about it and it forces your brain to, you know, I guess, like, stay that, like, mentally active and you're not essentially, you know, picking picking dandelions out in right field uh, to use a baseball expression there. Uh, you noticeably came out of the net a lot of times to play the puck, whether you steer it back on your backhand or you elevate it across the glass. Talk about what happens when a goalie needs to leave the net and make a play on it. Like, what are the things that you're looking for? Are you trying to just get it away from the net as far as you can? Or is it like, oh, like, hey, like, I'm actually trying to, you know, go off the glass and drop it right at somebody who's going to be there? Or, you know, okay, like, they're calling for it this way. I'm just going to pass it back and maybe try to get in the way, like, intentionally, non-intentionally set a pick on a guy coming through. Yeah, I think that the, the biggest thing for a goaltender when playing the puck is you just got to take kind of a look up ice when you first uh, when it's first coming down, kind of scan the ice, see what's coming at you. And then from there, you kind of make your decision to see what their four check is and what players you have coming back. Uh, so I know like in a few instances last, uh, last game there where there was hard pressure on and really the only play you have is to rim it up the glass and and hope to get it out, but um, if obviously if I can make a play, um, I'd prefer to make just that simple five, ten foot pass to the defenseman, and then uh, ha let them have a clean breakout from there. So I think the biggest thing is just scanning up ice and seeing what's coming at you from uh, our team and from their team. When you keep your head up, good things happen. That's what I'm told across any sport. When you're looking down at your feet, one, especially in hockey, that's when that tends to mean that you're going to end up with your backside on the ice at some point. Hopefully not for you um, as a goalie. And uh, First time for the Black Bears in a shootout this season, and Coach talked about it, about how you guys work on some shootout style, one-on-none -on -one or one-on-one -on -one with the goaltender. Um, what's the mindset for a goalie? Because I've heard at with some teams the coach gives the decision to the home goalie. Uh, whether they want to shoot first or second. Did you have any input? Did you say, like, hey, I want to go first, like, I want to have the chance to make a save, or because like, I really don't care what we do? Um, t to me, it doesn't matter. Uh, my mindset still stays the same. I just got to stop the puck. Rather, we go first or second, and obviously I can't control the other the other part of that. But um, to me, I, I like when we shoot uh, when we shoot second there because then we, we're kind of more in control uh, to win the game. Uh, but, yeah, to me, it doesn't really doesn't really affect me too much. I just try to keep keep my mind on that one thing, stop the puck. I've always been a fan of letting my t or hoping that my team shoots second. Um, you know, I watch a ton of Carolina Hurricanes games, and the first year that they had Rod Brindamore, I believe they actually had a streak of winning ten consecutive like ten consecutive shootouts uh, in a row because they practiced shootout stuff so much in practice. But they was like, okay, we always want to go second because that means we're going to have the last shot. 
um, and the last opportunity either to tie it, send it to another round, or they can walk it off. Uh, unfortunately for the Black Bears, losers in the shootout for the first time this season. They now are 1-1, one and, one, and when the game goes to overtime, and now 0-1 oh in shootouts. And we talked about the film sessions earlier this week. What are things that you're looking for as a goaltender uh, in the film session? Are you looking at your positioning in between the pipes? Are you coming out enough to challenge and take away the angle? Or is it more of, okay, hey, like you're trying to learn tendencies from other players ahead of time, like in a scouting report? Um, I think it's a little bit of both. Obviously, uh, when we did video this week, I saw uh, many things in my game that I need to improve on and that I can do. Uh, if whether that be you know getting, getting an up depth or just on certain plays how to play the situation, uh, but I think it's a little bit of both because you definitely want to watch the other teams that you're playing coming up and kind of see what their tendencies are, and uh, that kind of helps you prepare for the week and know what you're going to get into that weekend. That's the voice of Black Bears goaltender uh, Riley McVeigh, and Riley, I got to ask after playing two straight days and you know seeing over. 50 shots combined between the two nights. What was Sunday like for you on the body? Was it a little taxing? Uh, it wasn't too bad. It wasn't uh, wasn't horrible, but uh, Sundays, you know, nice relaxing day, watch some football, and then uh, just get back to work on Monday. Okay, so being from Calgary, we already know that you're a Flames guy. When you say watching football, what's the football team that you cheer for the most? Uh, Raiders. I'm a big Raiders fan. Okay. So, how, yeah. do you, how do you feel about the move to Las Vegas out of Oakland? Um, it's, not, it's not the black hole anymore. It's not the same uh, crowd intensity, but uh, I was able to make it down to Las Vegas last year with my buddy to catch a game and uh, quite the stadium and quite the experience. So oh. uh, it was a lot of fun. Absolutely. The Davis family spent a whole lot of money. Uh, out there in Las Vegas. Well, Riley, we appreciate your time here on a Tuesday night. We're come back after these messages, wrap up the show, and send it for a preview against the Delaware Thunder coming up on Friday and Saturday. Don't go anywhere, folks, right after these messages. River Dragons now have a 4-1 advantage over the Port Huron Prowlers. That's a look at the out-of-town scoreboard. And next time you hear my voice, we'll be back for the third period. 20 minutes left to go in this one as the Black Bears look to sweep Delaware with one period left to play. Don't go anywhere, folks. The third period's coming up on Fox 1430. Grab a beer with Southern Tier Brew, available on the concourse at all Black Bear games and at a store near you. Southern Tier Brewing Company is an industry leader and one of the top craft beer producers in the United States. The handcrafted ales are now available in more than 30 states and beyond, continuing to deliver consistent and quality beers while innovating to bring new bold flavors and formulas.
coming back uh, to the third period, so I'm just going to start talking. Perfect timing as we make our way back in for the third period, brought to you by our good friends over at American Standard Heating and Cooling. They are built to a higher standard. They are the presenting sponsor of the third period tonight and every night. And, Julia, it's important to remember that the Black Bears still have three minutes and ten seconds left of penalty time to kill for yep. JT Walters. As I look across and I see JT Walters, I hope that Delaware does not turn it on this period as we don't want them to start going if we want Bingham team to keep the lead. Delaware wins the faceoff, and Anderson blocks a shot with his claw. That will leave a bruise in the morning. Not a lot of protection on the backside of the players. It's all in the front. And Lewis trying to come away with a shorthanded opportunity on the heavy forward check. Bumps Wilson into the official. Down low. And Lewis still applying some heavy forward check. And if you're the Black Bears, you don't want to take your pedal off of the gas. But you also need to know that you have a lot of penalty time that you have to kill off. Keep doing what's been working. And don't let up. Gafferoff throws a wrist shot trying to seek it over the shoulder of Riley McVeigh. Uh, Delaware keeps the puck in temporarily, but finds the stick of Tyson Kirkby, and he'll give it up for his former college teammate, Mac Lewis. Lewis now with it on his backhand, a little too soft on the pass, hoping that the fresh ice was going to glide that puck a little bit further. Kirkby, though, does a good job tying up Weber down low against the boards with it in front of the Delaware bench, but Houston Wilson skates out to neutralize, crosses the blue line, and immediately steering the puck away is the captain, Schultz, back out to neutralize. Two minutes left to go here in the penalty. Three minutes gone to the fighting major issued to JT Walters. Black Bears penalty kill is three for three so far, trying to make it four for four. Gafferoff will circle the wagons behind his own net and will drop it back for Chris Corgan, who gets run into by Newberg. And the Black Bears will have another man going to the penalty box here. That will be Newberg for kneeing as the net gets vacated. Schultz touches up, and it looks like Josh Newberg is headed to the penalty box. And it'll be five on three now in favor of the Thunder. This will be a long five on three for the Black Bears to kill as there's still a minute 41 remaining in the Walters major penalty. And we'll see how McVeigh and Black Bears defense does. You don't see kneeing call too much across the boards now in all of hockey. But now the Black Bears have a minute 41 of a two man deficit that they will have to kill off. Tonight's attendance inside the arena brought to you by our friend Bobby, 3,376, coming in on a Saturday night. Black Bears still leading the FPHL in attendance as the Delaware power play unit makes its way onto the ice. And Matitis now over to Basie. Basie puts it down low for Aloyan. Puck out in front. O'Reilly was looking for the one-timer, but Kirkby does a good job of tying up his stick. And Kirby will skate off. Brett Parker comes out onto the ice. And only one man changing right now as the Black Bears find themselves down by two men on the ice. But where it matters the most, they're up by four. Here comes Ricky Regala, 99 in white. Circles the blue line, crosses on side, gives it over for Basie. And now for Amatitis down low, O'Reilly getting reversed. Black Bears trying to do a good job of gapping up, not getting too committed to the shooter with the puck. Let their goaltender see it you don't want to screen your own goalie cross ice pass for Basie as Basie takes his eye off of it Parker coming in and trying to handcuff Basie but Parker does a great job of getting back a wrist shot swallowed up by McVeigh he does the smart thing there and just covers it up anytime you're down by two men any whistle you can get fresh bodies on the ice is always better and now the Black Bears put a Thank you, Eric Graphic out there. Ogan Azoff, one of the original Black Bears, been traded to Delaware last week and now playing for the team dressed in white and black tonight. Gavaroff thought about going for the Michigan-style goal or the Svechnikov if you're from North Carolina nowadays. Corrigan with it in the slot, giving it back to Gafferoff in the faceoff dot. Here, a whisk around. Uh, Pirouette giving it up for a one-timer. Saucy throws it wide of the net. McVeigh didn't see that one. Heard it bounce off the boards, relocates the puck. Gafferoff with it, now in dead center ice. Back at the blue line, wrist shot high of the target. Gets it down low again to Corgan. One second left to go in the Walters penalty, and here comes JT out of the penalty box. First penalty's down, and a heavy hit laid on by Walters as soon as he comes out of the penalty box. 
right on a Delaware member, and it looked like Alex Susi caught the worst of that one from JT Walters, had no idea he was coming out of the box. One penalty killed off, Julia, and 10 seconds left to go as we get a look at the Heinz Energy replay. Walters headed straight out of the box and took down the Delaware player straight into Yarwood, actually. They, both of them did not see him coming. A little bit of friendly fire as Yarwood gets caught in the crossfire. Short-handed opportunity for D'Angelo. And Regala will send him down to the ice. A little, hey, how you been? Issued out by Regala, 99 in white. No quarter given at the line by Newberg. Fresh out of the penalty box and the Black Bears continue to be perfect on the night in the penalty kill. Good job by Newberg, who was just skating out of the penalty box back over to the bench. Does a good job of making sure the Delaware cannot enter the zone. Kirby with it down low. And now D'Angelo will join the party. Puck is available behind the net. Kirkby has it on his back end, looking for Jurich just wide. Merkel throws a wrist shot. Jurich, second chance opportunity. Mikhail scrambling to get back to his post, trying to relocate it, and Aloyan will skate it out to neutral ice. It'll find his way to Gino D'Angelo. Kirkby will just up it into the zone. But take away now for Jurich. Wrist shot and a save made by Mikhail. All the way back out to the faceoff dot now is Fitzgerald poking down. Kirkby in the dot, wraps it around Regala, but Regala stands his ground and does a great job. Bodies flying here in the third period. Gino D'Angelo trying to stick handle his way to the front of the net. And Delaware appears to escape harm. Now Wilson crosses the blue line on sides. Toe drags around Merkel, power move to the front, and Riley McVeigh holds the post and stands his ground. Parker, full ice pass over to Ivoshkin, looking for goal number four. Ivoshkin tried the Kuznetskov move, the no deep, tried to glide it right through the five hole of McHale, but instead McHale gets his stick covering up the five hole, puts it out to center ice, and it remains four to nothing. Another turnover though, Here, look, here's Austin Thompson. Thompson back to Ivoshkin, puck is available in the blue paint. Delaware first to it, they give it right back to Schultz. Wrist shot deflected, Ivoshkin trying to baseball that one out of midair. No one can find the puck or settle it down. Boilar will elevate it over a defenseman, over Oganezov. Centering pass out in front. Parker trying to find that one. And finally, an opportunity for Delaware and myself to catch my breath as Weber skates out to neutral ice. Weber indirects a backhand pass and a heavy hit laid on by the captain. That gets the crowd back out on their feet. Here comes Ivoshkin. His centering pass for Thompson gets deflected on the way through by Chris Corrigan, I believe. Black Bears still applying heavy pressure. They now have 36 shots on goal. A turnover right there puts the puck in center ice. Binghamton's offense not being able to change as they just had the puck the entire time. And Delaware will throw it down low. Boilar first to it. Throws it back on his forehand. And Parker giving it now for Thompson. Now Thompson to Ivoshkin back at the blue line. Ivoshkin trying to sidestep a tattoo. Now triple teamed is Nikita. Puck is down low, Yarwood trying to give it right back to Ivoshkin, finds it into the corner. And Ivoshkin gets run into by the referee getting in the way. And Mac Lewis blows a tire. Trying to find his man, he gets back up. Good to see that his skates are still intact. Maybe only hurt his pride a little bit there. But 13 minutes left to go. Here in this one, Black Bears up by four. And Lewis. Now we'll just throw it all the way around the boards. And slap shot put on, easily detected by McHale. And that'll send us to a media timeout. 12.54 left to go. Black Bears still up by four in the American Heating and Air Conditioning third period. Don't go anywhere, folks. More to come. You're listening on Fox 1430. Let me guess. Welcome back to the action. 12.54 left to go. Binghamton still up by four. As it's the Excite Motorsports second chance right now as the Worldwide Sports Supply Ice Crew throwing some t-shirts out into the stands. 
And Julia, you were talking to me off air while we were at commercial. We saw a mission again attempted by Gafferoff on the power play, but you were telling me that the Black Bears were able to score a Michigan-style goal last year here in this building. Cameron Yarwood uh, had a Michigan here in the Visions Veterans Memorial Arena last season. We're going to see if that can recreate itself a little bit later on in the season or later on tonight. We still got a lot of time left to go. Wilson skating across the red line. Play is on sides for where the Thunder and a great stick by Yarwood as Julia was just talking about Cameron getting his stick out in front and deflecting it into the netting. For a defenseman, Yarwood loves the stick handle and he loves to crash the net. And that's why we see goals like the Michigan. And I'm pretty sure he scored from his knees a few times last year. Yarwood had a game tying assist and game winning assist a little bit earlier in the season in the overtime victory back in October here at home against the Mississippi Sea Wolves. And that just proves your point a little bit more. Proving my point, Gino D'Angelo, one of the hardest working Black Bears out on the ice, gives it up for Jurich. Backhand is blockered away by McHale from Jurich. And Gino did a really good job of winning the faceoff forward, tying up the other centerman stick. He sidesteps and creates an opportunity going down the other way. Kirby now with it at the blue line. He puts on a tight turn, gets it down low to his best friend Jurich. And Jurich now loses control of the puck. He's met with force from Alex Basie, and Kirkby sends his man down to the ice. Basie and Kirkby are going to go, folks, and here we go. Kirkby and Basie going at it. Basie throwing haymakers. The jersey gets on top of Kirkby. Kirkby tries to make his way back up to the feet, pleading for more. And stick taps for everybody all around as Basie and Kirkby are headed to the box for five minutes. Basie got Kirkby's helmet off really fast, and Kirkby really didn't stand a chance there, but we saw them, you know, tap it out and salute each other for the effort. Always have respect in the hockey code. And it's Tyson Kirkby at 12.06 getting a look at the Heinz Energy replay. Basie didn't like the hit that Kirkby laid on. Uh, I can understand Basie standing up for his teammate right there. And like you said, once the helmet got off for Kirkby and that long hair starts getting into your eyes, the jersey gets on top of your head, and you're just fighting blind. You might as well have a hand tied behind your back as well. Looks like D'Angelo will skate over the helmet and the gloves. Back over to Kirkby in the penalty box. And if anything, it'll give Kirkby five minutes to catch his breath, freshen up maybe, and get ready for the post-game skate tonight. That's true. All fans and attendants who brought their skates will be able to participate in a post-game skate. As soon as the Black Bears are done changing out of their pads, 30 minutes after the final horn, it's a post-game skate. And maybe I heard that you might be even putting on your skates and joining the I team out on the ice. I was just going to say, Brooks, uh, I'm sure you'll put your skates on and be out there. Uh, there's a lot of faces now out there who would be watching. And I'm still in the learning process. I failed ice skating as a 10-year-old and never went back. But now working in professional hockey, I thought it was going to be the best opportunity to do so. Black Bears put a, a wrist shot. Back on target, McHale has to stand his ground. I believe that's shot number 40 of the night for the Black Bears as soon as he gets added to the total. Still doubling up the Delaware Thunder tonight. And for the Thunder, they probably just want to get out of this one uh, with just over 11 minutes left to go and go ahead and get a head start on next week and try to build anything that they can in the period. Obviously, they want to break the shutout. Parker's backhand pass looking for Ivashkin, who's in line for the first star tonight. Should anything barring a change, I would imagine he would be the Budweiser first star. Um, 11 minutes left to go, and another heavy hit laid on by MJ Merkel. Colin Fitzgerald now takes the puck from Riley McVay, who set it up on a tee. And Parker, three on three. The Black Bears cross the line on sides. A wrist shot from Parker, trying to find the score sheet himself tonight. He has an assist on the first goal from Ivoshkin, and 10.43 left to go. It looks like the Ivoshkin line will skate off for a line change. And that was, in fact, shot number 41 by Parker there as we are more than doubling Delaware shots on goals. That's why they pay you the big bucks, Julia, to keep me on my toes as D'Angelo is ushered out of the face-off dot by the linesman Josh Newberg, the extra forward tonight, makes his way in. Newberg, I believe, is the best centerman for the Black Bears in terms of face-off controls. I feel like every time Newberg is in the face-off dot that he's going to win it, and he pushes it backwards. He does that there. 
Allows the Black Bears to have a possession. Newberg throws a weak slap shot to the net that's easily turned aside and a wrist shot from Fitzgerald. Out in front, might have caught D'Angelo on the way through. But now D'Angelo pestering his old teammate, Regala Regala, trying to throw a wrist shot on goal. McVeigh will watch that one steer away. And wide, and now Newberg throws it up for Jurich. This would be icing, and in fact it is against the Black Bears. They're bringing it back all the way with 10.06 left to go in the third period. We've seen Newberg today not only doing well on the faceoffs, but when he is on the ice, he's stopping Delaware at the blue line, which is more than you could ask for for your 11th forward. Newberg, as Julia mentioned, the extra forward tonight. They will stay on the ice because they have to. Icing against the Black Bears, not allowed to change on the end fraction. And Fitzgerald now looking for the cross ice pass for Jurich. Gets the red line and dumps it in down low. Jurich will get off for a change. And D'Angelo applying heavy pressure. Here push Eric Oganez off into the corner and Chris Corgan skating with it across his own blue line. The red line and now the Binghamton side throws a wrist shot on top of McVeigh. It goes off the glass, doesn't find anyone. And now the team's jockey for it right in front of the Black Bears bench and away skating with it is Mac Lewis. Three on two for the Black Bears if they hurry. Lewis looking for his second goal of the night has his shot blocked on the way through by Movelli. Movelli steers it over and Anderson who was covering the blue line does a good job of choking down and keeping the puck in the Delaware end. Anderson throws a wrist shot on and Lewis will collect a rebound behind the net. And a stick lift right out in front. Crowd looking for a call. No one's going to get one, and it will escape the grasp of Jamie Bussell. Boilar goes D to D for Schultz, and Schultz with a head of steam and a head up. Looking for a friend to pass to. Schultz backward skating in the offensive end. Passes it back for Anderson, and the wrist shot is detected all the way by McHale. 4 0. 8.57 left to go in favor of the Black Bears, left to go in the third period. Don't go anywhere, folks. We're not done with this one just quite yet. You're listening to Black Bears Hockey on Fox 14.30. Check out a Binghamton Black Bears game like you've never seen before for the Skybox night or group night. You can even watch warm-ups from the Black Bears bench with your friends, high-five the players as they take the ice, and so much more. Or we'll watch the game in style in a Skybox and check out a new and improved food and drink menu. Call the Black Bears at 607-722-7367 and begin your group or skybox experience. Now back to more Black Bears hockey on Fox Sports 1430, Binghamton. Welcome back to the action. It's the Triple Cities Family Dental Kiss Cam going on right now. As Triple Cities Family Dental crowd sponsors of the pregame show. We'll be live for the pregame show against the Danbury Hat Tricks on Wednesday. November 23rd, it is also two for one beer night. Great reason to come out, get a head start on your holiday weekend. That could also be a deciding game depending on our outcome and Dan Berry's tonight. We'll be fighting for first in the division. We'll take a look at the out of town scoreboard once we get into the La Quinta Inn and Suites post game show. We get some updated numbers as Parker tries to indirect one between his leg. Come through on the wraparound second try, and McHale will stand his ground. No goal for Parker that time as Boilaro will hit Weber into the linesman. Camped out right in front of the bench. The referee gets in the way. That allows the Delaware Thunder to maintain possession as Regala will head fake around his man, matching him at the point. That's Nikita Ivashkin. And now Parker skates away, looking for the home run pass for Ivashkin. They connect. Ivashkin in backhand, saved by McHale. And where's the puck? Squeezed in between the pad and the leg of the goaltender. No goal, as Ivashkin thought he had goal number four on the night. Eight sixteen left to go here. And some shirts being exchanged between the two sides near the benches. Ivashkin appears to be okay after he was down for just a quick second. Makes his way over to the bench. And Newberg, Jurich, and D'Angelo now back out on the ice with Yardwood and Boylard. Face off one back by Newberg. And Yardwood does a nice job with a backhand pass for the alternate captain, Jurich, who puts a slap shot on. Easily detected by McHale. 44 shots on goal so far for the Black Bears this period. 
or this game rather, not in the period, that would be astronomical. Delaware is able to escape the zone, and at the next dead whistle, we we'll have some players coming back out of the penalty box, I believe. Oh, no, their penalties expired off of the board, but at 7.06, that's when Kirkby and AC will be able to come out of the penalty box. Icing against Delaware, and same 10 players on the ice. We're reset in the same faceoff dot and do it all again. Newberg won it back again, Brooks, just like you said earlier. Arguably our best faceoff taker. And her have another opportunity if he wants to. Uh, bad news for the Black Bears is Delaware is now allowed to change. Coming off of a meltdown from the goaltender, Mike McHale. Played high school lacrosse with a guy named Mike McHale, and ironically enough, he also played goalie. Don't know where Mike is now, but Mike, if you're listening in across the airwaves, shout out to you, bud. I miss you to reach out sometime. Garwa toe drags around a defender at the blue line. He wants to jump in and join the fun on the offensive side. Her backhanded down low for Jurich. And Jurich thought about going for the alley-oop style goal, trying to lift it up to Yarwood. That would have been a real heads-up play, but Delaware reads it the entire way, and they will escape their own end. And Gafferoff now crosses the line onside, and here's Oganezov looking for his first goal with the Thunder. It's off the top of the blocker of McVeigh, deflected into the netting. 7.19 left to go in the period. And you can tell that Oganezov is really hunting for his first goal against the Black Bears. He's been throwing wrist shots that have been missiles for the top shelf portion of the night, or of the net rather. Last night he hit the crossbar against Joe Shepard. And that time he McVay just being able to get a small piece of the blocker over to it. Fitzgerald throws it to an open corner, but nobody's there for the Black Bears. However, an outstretched Mac Lewis will be able to put the puck out to neutralize. And the Black Bears will think about tagging up. They do. They look at their numbers and everybody gets into position. Seven minutes left to go here. As Basie and Kirkby get their equipment back on, they will be allowed to re-enter the game here momentarily. Cross ice pass, Wilson for Amatitis, and it's too far for Amatitis. Right into the hands of the Oswego Laker, Mac Lewis, and now Wilson down low with it. He turns it over, and Jesse Anderson tries to go off the wall, gets bumped on the way through by Brennan. Haven't seen too much of Brennan here tonight on Saturday. We saw a lot more of Joseph Brennan last night playing for the Thunder at home. And now here on the road in Binghamton, haven't seen 17 in white too much, but now he's the high forward in, and he's going to chase after the puck. That McVeigh indirects it to Bussell, and now Thompson skates away with it. Thompson over to Parker behind the net. Not a lot of real estate out in front of the net, right off the stick of Movali. Watch out. Always dangerous playing the puck in your own crease, especially as a defenseman. You don't know which way it's going to bounce. Movali takes a heavy hit from Brett Parker on the hip check. And look out. The collision of the game had already been issued out, but I think Brett Parker just put his name into the running. My, oh, my. The little engine that could, Brett Parker. And now some more bodies flying around for Delaware. And MJ Merkel stands up Chris Corgan. Corgan not really happy about that. Hit play will continue. And now Parker with it, off the glove, still available, and directed down low behind the goal line. Chris Corgan now with the puck. Parker's been playing a great game. He might not have many points, but both in the offensive and defensive zone, you see him active in the play. Parker with another heavy hit, sending a man down to the ice, and Parker's going to get called for interference that time, saying that maybe the puck wasn't quite there yet. It might have been a little premature on the hit. Five minutes and 10 seconds left to go here and the Delaware power play making its way back out onto the ice. Brett Parker with a two minute minor for interference with 5.10 left to go. Black Bears have taken a couple more penalties than they would like to tonight, Julia, but so far the penalty kill has been playing very good. Yeah, our penalty kill is perfect tonight, and I'm sure they want to keep it that way. But we'll see as we have two more minutes to kill. Brett Parker, two minutes at 5.08 for interference. We'll see if 
the Black Bears will get frustrated with the call or if they stay true to their discipline and McVeigh will swallow up. McVeigh's been doing a good job tonight of covering the puck and not leaving any rebound for Delaware. That's only the 21st shot that he's seen all night. Just under five minutes left to go here. And when we come back, the Black Bears are still on the penalty kill. Don't go anywhere, folks. Binghamton up four to nothing over the Delaware Thunder. You're listening to Fox 1430 in Binghamton. Welcome back to Fox Sports 1430 right here in Binghamton. The Learning Ladder Child Care Centers are located in Endicott and Johnson City. They enroll children ages 6 weeks to 12 years old. Call 607-770-3806 for an appointment today to walk through one of their facilities. Come join their family and they will help your child grow. Uh, the crowd getting implored to scream and try to help the Black Bears continue what they've been doing so far and that's remained perfect on the penalty kill tonight. And Thompson tries to escape the zone but it just hops his stick over at the last possible second Delaware. Still looking for their first goal here. A golden opportunity with the man advantage. A wrist shot that has never made its way to McVeigh is blocked on the way through by Newberg and Newberg now getting some time on the penalty kill. Thompson though will chip it and look out, short-handed breakaway. Austin Thompson in alone. Backhand and McHale holds the post. Second chance and another save made by McHale. And look out now, here comes Dennis Gafferoff the other way. Gafferoff tries to put on a stick handling display and Jake Schultz will have nothing to do with it. That goes off the top of the glass, the linesman right on top of it. That could have been another penalty against the Black Bears and it looks like a lucky fan down in row A is going home with a souvenir tonight. And our next game will be Thanksgiving Eve, which is a Wednesday. And our special is two for one beers as we take on the Danbury Hat Tricks with a special 6 p.m. start. It'll be a 5.45 Triple Cities pregame show. Airtime on Fox 1430 and on the iHeartRadio app. And we have a lot of school groups coming out that night, so if you wanted your tickets, make sure to secure them now as they're going fast. And Julia, where can our friends at home who are listening find those tickets? They can find them on our website through Ticketmaster or by calling the office at 607-722-7367. That's the voice of tonight's color partner, Julia Demola, and now the puck gets down low, and Yarwood plays that one down with a high stick. Regala, first one to touch it up. High sticking is waved off, and now Emma Titus with it just outside the faceoff. Dot back up top for Basie. Basie puts a slap shot on. It's available in the blue paint. Might have been friendly fire as Susie might have blocked that one. Never made it to McVeigh. And Yarwood was able to wrap it all the way down the ice. 340 left to go here. Inside Vision Veterans Memorial Arena. Regala dressed in 99 in white, trying to show off a little bit for his new team. Throws a wrist shot. That's swallowed up by McVeigh and no further play. There's only 21 seconds left here on the penalty kill as Binghamton tries to remain perfect on the night. 21 seconds as Julia said on the penalty kill brought to you by our friends over at the Northeastern Striping Corporation. Your one-stop shop for specialty contracting and paving and your concrete needs. Post-game skate getting ready to take place as well. I've seen some fans start to pick up their skates from their seats. Maybe some fans want to be the first ones down on the ice. We have the La Quinta Inn and Suites post-game show, so me and Julia will not be the first ones out on the ice. And please don't blow by us on the ice if you're listening in around on the concourse. I'm still learning. Don't make fun of me. Ogonezov on the one-timer. McVeigh can't find the loose puck. And there goes the shutout as Dennis Gafferoff collects the loose change out in front. You could feel the frustration from McVeigh as we gave up a short-handed goal. Power play goal, that oh, is. Oh, my bad. Uh, take a look at the Heinz Energy replay. 
a set play. Oganezov throws a slap shot. It becomes available. And Dennis Gafferoff, the right place, right time, just like Ivashkin earlier tonight, puts the Thunder on the board. It will not be a shutout as the Black Bears still hunt for their first shutout victory of the season. They're still up by three and in control of the game. Shots on goal are 48 for Binghamton, 23 now for Delaware. And the latest from Dennis Gafferoff finding the back of the net. Fitzgerald now having to stick handle in a phone booth around his man. And he comes away with the puck as he can settle it down, plays on sides. He starts and stops for Kirkby. One touch passing for Jurich, who tries to hack at it. Puck is still available. Where is it? It's in the back of the net. At first, you don't succeed. Try, try again. And Tyler Jurich just kept hacking and whacking at it. And now it's 5-1 to one Binghamton as the teams will trade goals two in one minute. You see Oganezov still on his knee over by the goal. Clearly, they are frustrated with Jurich's goal. Tyler Jurich cashes in. It's an even strength goal for the Black Bears. It was 22 opposite Jurich. Dennis Gafferoff getting the Black Bears, excuse me, breaking the Black Bears shutout, getting one pass McVeigh as a wrist shot is put on by Kirkby, D'Angelo with it. Down low, centering pass out in front and Kirkby elevates it too high over the net. That could have been goal number six on the night. The Black Bears have already grasped the all elusive burger goal for scoring four tonight at home and Kirkby takes a look up, tried to indirect it out to neutralize. He takes a seat on his butt as he lost his edge. Fitzgerald takes a hit. Delaware trying to generate any kind of offense and get a head start on next week's contest. Something to build on and not linger with 2.11 left to go here in the third period. Fitzgerald overskated that one. That'll allow Regala to choke in a little bit and Regala does a good job stick handling. He throws a shot on goal and McVeigh will turn it aside. If this makes the line, it will be icing against the Black Bears. The linesman says no, it is it will stop with some spin on it like a sand wedge on a green. It doesn't make the line. Puck continues, and the clock rolls on. A minute 50 left to go. Delaware crosses the line off sides with 145. A little bit of a misplay by Chris Corgan right at the Binghamton blue line, and the referee has to intervene. Don't go anywhere, folks. The La Quinta Inn and Sweets postgame show is coming up right after the final horn goes off. And now the Black Bears looking for more. Ivoshkin taken down to the ice. Crowd wants a call, and they're going to get one. Ivoshkin with a stick between his legs. That can't feel too good as it looks like Alex Basie is headed back to the penalty box for what might be the final time tonight. 1.32 left to go in the game. And 27 and White will take a seat. Take a look at the Heinz energy replay. It would be hard not to call that one considering his stick was still in between Avashkin's legs. Well, a hook, hold, or a trip. Any way you're right about it, it's a two-minute minor. And the Black Bears are back out on the power play. They have a power play goal earlier tonight. Thanks to Nikita Ivashkin looking for power play goal number two. Mac Lewis giving it up now to Tyler Jurich at the blue line and Kirkby. Throws it down low into the faceoff dot for Yarwood. Yarwood screens to the net. Pass onto the back door for Jurich and off his stick. Delaware throws it out to neutral ice and Kirkby has to recollect it. A golden opportunity for the Black Bears to add on one more. Here just over a minute left to go in tonight's contest. One minute remaining in the period as the puck gets thrown all the way down the ice. And McVeigh will just saucer it over for Jamie Bussell. Black Bears in the midst of a partial line change on the power play unit, trying to get all the second unit guys out on the ice. Kirkby now is still out there. Gives it over for Bussell. Saucer pass, giving it up for Yarwood. Yarwood was in a perfect one-timing position. Tries to backhand it, but nobody home for the Black Bears as Delaware throws it all the way down the ice. McVeigh has to come out of his net and bluffed Oganezov on the backhand attempt. Instead, gives it over for Ivashkin. Ivashkin now with a head of steam. Gets it stripped away from him, and Wilson 
had a partial breakaway, trying to go for a shorthanded opportunity in the yawning seconds of the period. Ten seconds left to go, and Thompson has it hop over his stick. The linesman says play on, and that'll do it here for us here. Three seconds and two. Ivoskin throwing a pass. Nobody home. And the Black Bears will win by a final score of 5-11. to 11. Five to one, Brooks. Excuse five me, to five one. to one as I get taught. Excuse me, five to one. Thank you, Julia, for keeping me on my toes. An excellent job. As we get ready to go to the La Quinta and in Suites postgame show, don't go anywhere, folks. Or say it one more time just in case I startled anybody at home. Black Bears five, Thunder one. You're listening to Black Bears Hockey on Fox 1430 in Binghamton. Don't go anywhere, folks. Postgame show coming up. Got one break during the post game. All right, thank you. Yes, I'm Colagol, a prescription colon cancer screening option for people 45 plus at average risk. Have you screened for colon cancer? Not yet. Don't wait. It's more treatable when caught in early stages. Tell me more. Colagol is non-invasive and it's used at home. It detects altered DNA in your stool to find 92% of colon cancers. 92%? Yep, even as, as in the early stages. This was seen in a clinical study with patients 50 and older. Any positive results should be followed by a diagnostic colon cancer. Cologuard is not a replacement hey, for colonoscopy in high risk patients. We don't, we don't Do not use if you have had adenomas, have inflammatory one. bowel disease, and certain hereditary syndromes, or a personal or and family a, history of colon cancer. Most insured patients pay zero dollars. Ask your provider or an online prescriber if Cologuard is right for you, or visit Cologuard.com. I'm in. Get ready for the smartest bundle in streaming. Six streaming services for the intellectually curious. Featuring Curiosity Stream with the best collection of documentary films and TV shows. Psalm TV and great stories from the world of wine. Tastemade for the fun side of food and travel. Top it with the best thrillers and crime. From nature to history, technology to food, mystery to adventure. Get six streaming services for one low price. And less than $6 a month, it's the best deal in streaming. Learn more and sign up now at smartbundle.com. What if there was an app where you could listen to this radio station plus hundreds more from across the country? What if that app had every song from every artist that you love? Along with the biggest podcast in the world. Impossible. Couldn't find an app with it all. So we made it. Okay. The free iHeartRadio app is the future of audio, and it's available now in your app store. Listen to what you want, when you want, wherever you want to. Download the free iHeartRadio app for all the music, radio, and podcasts. And the game is over, but our coverage of Binghamton Black Bear Hockey continues. Welcome to the Lakita Inn and Suites postgame show. A complete game recap, scores from around the FBHL and the world of hockey, and a look ahead to the next Black Bears game is all on the way. Now, back to the arena and the voice of the Black Bears, Brooks Hill on Fox Sports 1430. Brooks Hill along with Julia DeMola tonight here as the three stars have just skated their way out onto the ice. Let's read. The Budweiser, three stars of tonight's game. They all come from the Binghamton Black Bears as they are deserving. The third star of tonight's game, Austin Thompson tonight with two assists. And it's good to see Austin producing some offensive points once again, Julia, after being out for so long with an injury. Thompson's getting back into the swing of things and he's doing